Hey, lolly guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide, and this time we are getting it all in the epic F122. It's in the game. This was <laughs> developed, as always, by Codemasters, published by EA Sports. It's in the game. And it's usually available for $59.99, but not only has it been on sale for as low as just £9, around $12. It's also now on EA Play, included with Game Pass, so if Game Pass is what you got, well, get F1, it's smoking hot. Uh, so, what's to explain? You like F1? You like racing games? Job done. It's pretty similar to past F1 games. Fun, addictive, and makes you feel really good when you blast past the AI with their level down to very easy. Uh, now, achievements-wise, you've got a whole lot going on. We need a few multiplayer ones. Basically, there's a uh, section called My Team, which is sort of team owner slash driver career. Seems complicated, but it's very easy to get used to. Plus a whole random variety such as Get Pole, Be Fast, and all that jazz jizz magoni. But this is why I've put this guide together, to try and put it into a manageable and yet fast enough approach where nothing is too confusing and it won't take you an ungodly amount of hours. So hopefully this guide is a nice straightforward one and you can follow along easily. So this obviously isn't a two to three hour game as the guide suggests, rather it'll take around 25 to 30 hours by the time you finish all the multiplayer etc. And again, as I've said, I've condensed it down to hopefully give you a nice easy time with how to unlock everything. This is a great one, so I hope you enjoy too. And with that being said then, let's do it. And the first thing we're going to go for is get a couple of quick unlocks. So on the F1 Life tab, which is basically the home page here, um, we are going to select customization, which we're on, then casual and raceway, which will be the top one. We can just select these uh, existing design one and click on it by pressing the A button, click edit, and then go on to headway or whatever it is that you want, and literally just swap it over for the green cap. And that is one achievement done in no time at all. There we go. Looking good. Yeah, looking like a homie now. Looking like a Formula One race car driver. Right, so anyway, what we're going to do, back up, back out to the customization tab here. Go down again to my place. Select seating or anything else you want. Highlight any other couch. <laughs> now, these couches look awfully familiar. They definitely haven't been on no pornographic sets, have they? Uh, choose any one that you want, and that will unlock the feels like home achievement then. So that's two already. Right, now we're going to change the design of a car. So down to player car li liveries. And this may seem a little confusing at first, but what we're going to do then, just select this car. That's fine. Then we're going to edit, of course, again. Uh, select liveries. Is it liveries or liveries? It is liveries, isn't it? Yeah. So just select anything that you want then, uh, any car color. And then what you need to do... Um, so we need to highlight any of the other available libraries here, liveries, mystic or stinger, whatever this one is. Now what you need to do is select change color to show the cus color customization panel here. Now in this panel, you need to highlight the paint finish section, and then you need to change the default finish to any other option. So that could be from gloss to matte or anything else. Then, so go down to paint finish at the bottom there. So what you need to do, change that, and then you need to press the right bumper to select the next layer and change the paint finish on that one too. So change it from anything else and then press it again. So do it for all the layers in the livery. And as soon as you have, we have done the last one there, we'll unlock the looking stylish achievement. Next in the F1 Life tab, go down to F1 Life Visitors and choose any one that you want. I choose Sean Reinhardt because we actually go way back for boosting. Boosting sessions back in the day. Um, and that's it. So you'll get the just popping in achievement for visiting another player's F1 life arena. So that's four achievements that we have smashed like a pasty square in the bashti. Whatever the hell that means. I don't know. But still. Right. Few things then that we need to look out for. So a lot of the times before we start races and stuff like that, we will be reviewing, um, basically adjusting our settings to make things a lot easier. And along the way, we'll be unlocking supercar tokens. Now, basically, if you just go ahead and finish this game, uh, finish this game, finish this guide, you will unlock them. Um, and they're basically uh, automatically, and they're for basically un being able to unlock supercars for an achievement later on. So, um, what we're doing then, assists, of course, of course, what we're going to be doing is mess messing around with the, the, the um, uh, assists. So... Now, what I do highly advise is putting the steering assist here and the braking assist off. So put it to custom, 
um, and then put the steer in and brake and assist off. That'll just make it easier and it'll obviously give you a faster lap time as well. Instead of, obviously, instead of the game breaking for you, because it breaks about 600 metres from the corner, so it's a bit annoying, that one. So just make sure that those assists, at least, are off. Um, and then what we'll be doing, then, we'll be starting off our career in time trial mode. So we're not actually going to be starting a career just yet, uh, but we will be doing a time trial mode. Like I said, in terms of the supercar tokens, they're like little blue tokens that will pop up uh, quite randomly, uh, but basically it's for... It's for driving like 40 miles, 100 miles, 180 miles, supercar 10 miles. But anyway, uh, again, they will they should come automatically anyway. So what we're going to do, go to time trial then, over to solo, t select time trial. We can go, we're going to go with F1 2022. Um, this is pretty much the cars that we'll be driving in. You can choose literally uh, throughout the entire game, but you can choose any car, team, whoever it is that you want. Um, pretty much though, if you want to go... I, I I would definitely go just for the fastness, <laughs> the fastness, that is a word now, uh, go Red Bull or Ferrari. Um, Mercedes are not so bad, but they sucked in 2022, which was hilarious. <laughs> anyway, so what we're going to do then, we, uh, for time trial, what we have to do, we're going to basically select um, Bahrain and go through the entire, we've got to go through every track and select one, we, we've got to select every track, so we go through every track, but we have to do at least one clean lap. So if you do a lap that is invalidated, i.e. you've gone off the, the racetrack, you've cut a corner, it will come up on the screen that will say invalidated and you'll have to restart the lap. Also, we're going to be uh, specifically going for two achievements here. The Speed Demon achievement. Uh, and again, that's uh, this is how you would change the camera if you want to. Uh, you actually have to press start and go into it. But basically, uh, we need to take four photos of specific tracks, which will be Monaco, um, Great Britain, Belgium, and Italy, and the rest, we just have to hit over 186 miles per hour. Uh, as you can see, uh, already at the bottom here, as we start, once, once we're on the main track there, we're over 186. So that's one already done. So you just need to reach 186 miles per hour at 10 different tracks, and this is the first one already. So again, make sure to just go ahead and put in a nice clean lap. Once you've got the speed demon bit, the 186 miles per hour, you can literally just take your time with it, make sure not to go off. And again, as long as you've got the fastest lap there at the top and you didn't see your lap get invalidated, then we can just crack on. Uh, so that'll be lap one done. Then what you can do is press start, go to car and track selection. On the track, just go to the next one to the right, which will be Saudi Arabia. Again, make sure the weather type and the session start time is always day and uh, dry and midday. And then we're all good. So yeah, so for the, and again, every time you do something, you'll get this uh, bit of XP that'll pop up. That will obviously unlock you some things later on. Um, but this is all we're doing. So this is going to take you maybe about 40 minutes or so. Uh, maybe half an hour, 30 minutes. But it's the same thing here. So for Saudi Arabia, again, this is the second one for Speed Demon. You should get it straight away, exactly there. So as you can see, miles per hour, up on the 200, that's job done. So again, just put in a nice clean lap. And once you put in a nice clean lap, that is number two out of 10 for the Speed Demon, and that's two out of 22 for a one clean lap. So again, these laps in every in every uh, track, they have to be clean, otherwise it will not unlock. So do the same thing, go to Australia. I won't be showing you this every time, but just a couple of times just to get you used to it and sort of, um, uh, well, yeah, just to get used to it and know what to do so you can go from there. Right, next up then is Australia, and you should hit the 186 now, just as we go over the start finish straight. And that's job done. Next up then is going to be Imola. So I, we're still not in Australia, we're in Imola now. And again, this is going to be another speed demon one. So we go to Imola, and it'll, as soon as we uh, head over the... Start finish straight here. There is the next one. So after putting in a clean lap, we can then go ahead and nip to Miami. And you will get this one pretty much straight away. So we're already on the big massive straight. Look at that. 203 big balls. The biggest of pesticles there on these F1 drivers. Right. Next up then. Once you've put in a clean lap in Miami, which by the way can be tricky. There's a very tricky chicane in Miami. So just be careful on that one. I have to restart Miami actually. 
Uh, we go to Spain next, and again, on the Star Finish Street, we will get that one. So that is already two for six speeds out of ten. Next up is Monaco. Now, no matter how hard you try, you will not be able to get a speed demon one at all. You're, you're not able to get over 186 miles an hour, but this is the first one for the photo. And to get a photo, so what I would do first is put in a nice clean lap, so just take your time with it again. Put in a clean lap, make sure not to touch any of the barriers or run wide or get your lap invalidated. But as soon as you've crossed the line and you've got a lap done, what you can do is to go into photo mode, what you need to do is press the uh, start button and then press the, well, press the select button and then the start button. So everyone knows what the select button is, right? And the start button. Yeah. So once, once you press start, this is how you get into photo mode and you have a look, it'll automatically be um, counted. So you don't actually have to take a photograph, but as long as you're in the photo mode, um, that will count. So again, to get into photo mode, press the select, quote unquote <laughs> select button, then the start button, and that is how you will enter photo mode. So once you've done that then, then of course we can go ahead, go back to car and track selection and go into Azerbaijan. Thank you, Baku. God damn, Goku, your name is Baku now. Yeah, I am the Baku. Anyway, again, it's the same thing here. Of course, this is the next speed demon one. So 186 miles per hour. It's like a dark score. 186. There we go. Once we've hit that one and you've got a clean lap in for Baku, we can now go to Canada and we'll pretty much hit it automatically here. Ta-da! Look at that. 203. We're into big balls territory again. God damn. And as you can see, <laughs> because I cut the corner ever so slightly, it got invalidated. So I had to start it again, which was annoying. So that's speed one done again. Now for Great Britain, for the next track, um, we're going for speed and photo, which you should easily be able to get both. Um, and again, like I said, obviously, as you're pretty much aware by now, you can always tell when you're inside the time because you've got the green delta sign there in the top right hand corner. Plus, of course, you're basically racing against your default ghost. So, uh, pretty much you're onto a winner. Uh, you can't really get this one wrong. You know, it may take um, a lap or two, something like that, to sort of get used to it, to get used to the handling and everything. But once you're used to it, it is very easy. Anyway, there is the 186 on the first main straight. So that'll be the next speed demon. And then once you've got a nice clean lap in, then we can go ahead, press the select button. Then we can press the start button here, go into photo mode, and wow, beautiful, Great Britain. There we go, and that'll be the second out of four for classic photographer. Great Britain, one of the best countries in the world for Formula One, when Lewis has been winning the last, you know, for, for seven, eight years in a row. Strangely quiet, Great Britain, when Max has been winning the last two years. <laughs> anyway, on to Austria next. By the way, there's going to be a lot of... Oh, and there we go. Speed Demon will unlock straight away as long as you've hit 100, 186 miles per hour in the um, previous 10 tracks or whatever. So next up then, um, we've gone to Belgium. So next up will be France and Hungary. Um, but of course, you, you can just take your time with those ones now. But make sure you've put a, a lap in France and Hungary. And then we go to Belgium. And this is just for a photo opportunity. So as soon as you've got the clean lap here in Belgium, again, press select, press start. And that'll put you for three out of four for the pictures. I mean, to be fair, Belgium's lovely. One track I've always wanted to go to is the is the spa track in Belgium. It's just goddamn beautiful. And uh, yeah, there we go. So next up then will be the Netherlands. So after you've done Belgium, go to the Netherlands, put in a clean lap there. And then next up, we can go to Monza. Well, thanks very much. Here we go. So we, then we can go to Italy. And then we can just pop in the next and last photo. There it is then. So classic photographer, rare achievement. Beautiful. Right. So the last few tracks that you need to do then are Singapore, Japan, USA, Mexico, Brazil, and Abu Dhabi. Here we are at Abu Dhabi then. For the final one, and this will get you the all around the world. Now, of course, <laughs> as you're probably well aware, I'm not just driving and doing the laps for absolutely everything, of course. There will be a lot of editing, so you will probably be need to do be doing quite a little bit of pausing throughout the entirety of the game here. So I hope 
this sort of condensed guide um, will help you and it doesn't annoy you too much. I hope it doesn't anyway. Anyway, like I said, Singapore, Japan, USA, Mexico, Brazil, Abu Dhabi. As soon as you completed your final clean lap and you haven't got any inv invalidated laps on anything, the all around the world achievement will unlock there. And job's done, baby. And now we can end the session and get the hell out of time trial. Right, now we need to be doing some actual racing. And everybody loves the actual racing, huh? Me too, if I was pure Italian. But I am pure British. And I'm not a Lewis Hamilton fan, so oh, that's rare, right? <laughs> uh, anyway, from here then, what we're going to do. We are going to go now to Grand Prix mode. So it should be still on solo here. We're going to go to Grand Prix. And basically what we're going to do, we're going to do a couple of sort of season setups. So we're not just going to do like a whole career and do things like that. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to Grand Prix. We're going to pop in um, Bahrain. And then if you go down and that'll add another track, then you can go uh, either right or left. But we're going to put in Bahrain, Singapore. Go down to highlight another track. There it is. So Bahrain, Singapore. Then go and put Brazil on the map. So this is the custom championship, of course, remember? And then lastly, Abu Dhabi. So make sure it's Bahrain, Singapore, Brazil, and Abu Dhabi right here. Then what you can do, you can select any team and any driver. So again, uh, obviously what we're going to do, we're going to do a couple of very short races. We're going to do a medium race in wet conditions. And then we have to do a couple of races in the in a, uh, Formula 2. So um, I'm just choosing the king himself, Super Max. Super, super, super Max. There we go. And then when we're at the driver select screen, we'll be here at the Grand Prix setting screen. So what we're going to do here now in the top right hand corner, what you can see is the race style. Just make sure that's on standard just for uh, basically just for a lot of ease. Then we're going to go to assist. Now, make sure the driving proficiency is custom. Steering assist and braking assist is off. Anti-lock brakes on. Traction control and dynamic racing line full. The racing line type is 3D. Gearbox is automatic. Pit assist and pit release assist is both on. And ERS and DRS is off and on. So ERS off and DRS assist on. And then what you can do, you can either back out or you can press the right bumper button here to go to the weekend structure. So uh, there it is. So we'll be doing this quite a lot just to mess around with the assist again, just to make things a lot easier for us. Yes. So... Weekend structure standard, practice format off, qualifying format one shot. One shot is all it takes. And then session length, very short. This will give us three laps, which is fan, just fan. Right, uh, next we're going to go to weather and the time of day. Again, even though you, I, I just have to double check just to make sure they're all on, they should be, even if you just press the B button and back out. Weather and time of day, again, uh, the quick weather is clear and dry and the session start time is midday. Right, after this one, we're going to go to weather. Uh, no, we're going to go to rules and flags. Sorry, we've already done weather. Uh, rules and flags. So corner cutting only. So put rules and flags to corner cutting only. Corner cutting stringency to regular. Um, park Fermi on pit stop experience broadcast and the weekend tire allocation will always be set at default. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so that's fine. You can have a look if you want and change stuff, but there's actually no point for the time being. So just go ahead, leave it as it is. And then one last thing we've got to do then, we've just got to go on to simulation settings now. So again, you can press the right bumper just to go to the next uh, settings, or you can back out and go on to it, whichever one you want. So make sure the AI difficulty is down to zero. So hit left on the D-pad there for difficulty all the way to zero. Surface type simplified, recovery mode flashbacks, car damage off the low fuel mode uh, should still be on easy race starts assisted and collisions on so da, 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 da. now we can start and that's what we're going to do back out head to start event so what we're going to do is basically well we're going to get pole position that that's exactly what's going to be happening here so because the ai is set to zero and very easy you pretty much shouldn't, especially if you've been doing time trials, you've got a, you've got a handle of how the car actually feels and um, 
uh, weight to break, uh, steering, etc., especially with the assists off. Um, so this, honestly, with the, with the AI set to very easy, it should be absolutely no problem. Even if you're not the best racing driver in the world, like, I'm not, to be honest. I thought I was good until I went online and got my <laughs> got my ass absolutely handed to me. Um, but, yeah, so you should easily beat the, um, the AI here with no problem at all. If you want to have a look, obviously, in the top left-hand corner, it should say where you are first. And if you have a look back, if you uh, look down with the right stick, you can see the your competitors behind you. Um, but, again... Honestly, with it set to very simple, you should have absolutely no problem. Even if you're a beginner, it does it, it's easy to get used to, so no worries about that. But anyway, once you have completed the one-shot qualifying lap, and again, of course, if you end up going off and keep spinning or whatever, if you press the select button, and you can press left trigger to go back, right trigger to go forward, you can then press the uh, X button to use the flashback. So always, you know, and you've got constant... Oh, there's the goat. There he is, Goat Tifi. Mad dog, consistent as ever, 20th place. Um, but yeah, so you can use a flashback. So anytime you make a mistake, you've got unlimited flashbacks. Press the select button, press left trigger to go back or wherever you want it. And then press the X button there to use a flashback. But anyway, once you've got pole position, that will be good. You'll get the on top achievement. And now what we're going to do is win our first race. So we're just going to simply go ahead, go to next session. Of course, I haven't put the whole race on because there's no point. You know, if I wanted you, if I wanted everyone to laugh at me, I'll just, I'll just say some crappy dad jokes. That'll do me just fine, just fine. Uh, rather than laughing at my driving ability. So what you can do then, um, in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see the ERS assist. Now, if you press the left bumper once, it'll give you like a little boost of energy. Now, how to get that battery back, um, it comes back um, under braking. So, that's the simplest terms I can do it. Uh, if you go behind someone, you'll easily overtake them there, so don't worry about that. But that's what the ERS assist is for. So, um, as the green bar goes down, if you keep it on for the whole lap, it'll go down eventually. So, of course, you... And then... Uh, so, obviously, use it sparingly throughout the lap, as it were. Um, so you press the left bumper and then the left bumper, of course, to turn it off. Again, you'll get that battery back under braking. So as the harder you brake and the more you brake, the more you get that battery back. Um, but of course, it's always worth doing. It's always worth pressing the left bumper just to get a little bit of speed. Um, now and again, if you want to, it's, it's definitely worth doing, especially in qualifying anyway. But anyway, once you have won the race there, big Max Verstappen, Super Max, Super Max. Oh, 2021 Abu Dhabi. That'll always be the most hilarious day in history. Not for Lewis Hamilton fans, of course, but, you know, for the, for the rest of the world. Uh, anyway, once you've done that, you'll get the a great day achievement and a good day achievement for getting on the podium and winning our first race. You'll always have this little uh, podium scene right here, Park Fermi podium scene. And we can... And then that's all good, yeah. Just got one thing to check here. Let's go and take a look. And there he is. The GOAT. The go greatest of all time. Nicholas Goatifi. Still last. Consistency is key in Formula 1. Legend. I can't believe Williams got rid of him. I am fuming. Right then. So, after we finally got that then, uh, what we could do is now go to a replay. So, we can just quit out of here. And that's fine. Let's quit to the main menu. We don't have to do anything else. Now, we are on the... Um, main menu what we're going to do is toggle back over to the f1 life tab when we eventually can you know so toggle over of course with the left bumper f1 life that's what we're looking at so let's yeah there it is right go down to theater now basically our bahrain race win is going to be uh well, it's going to be the only one there so what we can do is press the y button here to keep the highlight you can put the highlight name for whatever it is um, and basically the achievement will unlock because it will go down to the saved highlights and oh you are now a formula one legend that's it we don't have to play the game anymore super max and again the word super or max lewis fans hate do you want some super noodles oh, i hate you so much right so let's continue on now with our custom season so go back to grand prix mode now again we have to do very short races um the only thing that we have to do here is just complete these races. So it literally doesn't matter. 
you can get pole and win if you want, but there is no requirement to win. So, mm, yeah, it, it all depends what you want to do. You can start on pole and you can win the race, get it done a little bit quicker, you know, a little bit quicker, but potentially if you want. But there is an achievement for overtaking 250 cars successfully. So if you want to do that, it's probably easier here to just retire from the session. Retire like a granddad. And uh, start from the back and just overtake and win. If you want to win, it doesn't matter. All we're doing is basically completing the next three races, which of course in our custom season will be Singapore, Brazil and Abu Dhabi. So again, you will have to complete all the races in order to get the Scorcher achievement. But again, there is no requirement to win, no requirement to get pole. So you can just take your time. Um, so yeah, so we just retired. We've gone nuts. And here is the start. And slide shout and away we go. Ah, Nicholas Latifi wins. What a legend. And yeah, so I'm just going to show you the start. Let's see how well I do. Fantastic. Look at that. Straight up to 18th place. Oh, Danny boy, terrible driving, terrible driving. Look at you, I'm back down to 18th place now, you douche nozzle. Uh, I'm sorry, I do love Ricardo. I'm not a douche nozzle. Right, so this was my progress back up the pack. And it was a Carlos Sainz win. I did manage to win. No, but that's okay. Um, we only needed to finish the race, so second it is, which is all good. So again, once you've done that one, we will continue on, go to Brazil. Again, like I said, to get it a done a little bit quicker, retire from qualifying, complete the Brazilian race, smashed it this time. Smashed it. And then finally, we will be able to crack on to Abu Dhabi. There we go. Ta-da! Oh, the scene of many Mercedes fans' heartbreaks, Abu Dhabi. And anger towards a certain Australian. <laughs> it's still entertaining. Anyway... There we go. So we've now got the Scorcher achievement for completing a race at F1's hottest tracks, which is Bahrain, Abu Dhabi, Singapore, and Brazil in clear weather. And that's why we've done clear weather. Very important. So now what we have to do, we're going to grab another couple of achievements, but we now have to do a Grand Prix medium race, which is the 25% distance in Monza with wet weather. And basically we're going to turn all the rules off so we can basically just shortcut the chicane, makes it easier. So go on to Grand Prix custom, go to Italy. Now, you could put this achievement here, the 25% distance win in the wet weather with the F2. Because, of course, we do have to do, again, pick a driver. It doesn't matter whichever one you want. Um, and I'll go back to the F2 one in just a second. But for now, what we're going to do, we're going to go to... Um, we'll go to weekend structure first. Qualifying format, one shot is all it takes. And then session, le uh, session length, medium. So make sure it is on medium. That is what will give you 25% race distance. And then once that is done, we can then go to uh, the weather and the time of day. This time we're going to make sure that the weather is wet. Not very wet, but just wet. And then midday is fine. And then we can put the rules and flags option to completely off. So head up to rules and flags. Rules and flags off. Completely off. That's exactly what we need. So what I'm going to do is basically now show you as we start the event, I'm just going to show you the qualifying lap that we do. Um, and I will show you where to shortcut the chicanes because that's what we're going to be doing for qualifying and for the majority of the Grand Prix because there is a there is an achievement while we're in first place for lapping the driver in second place in any game mode. And that achievement is called Annihilation. And the, the only way we can do this really is by doing a 25% wet race. Again, like I said, you can't... You could do it. Uh, now, here's the first chicane we're just going to smash through. So, smash through that one. So, again, you could do it there with the F2. Um, but I found that you will end up missing one of these achievements. So, that's why I've just gone with the Italian race first. Because it's always easy. Here's the second chicane. We can just go on the grass straight off. And then you got two corners. Two right-handers, of course, that we're going to take. Not as terribly as me, hopefully. <laughs> Definitely not as terribly as me. 
And then for the next right hand there, nice and easy. And the third chicane, of course, if, if you've played F1 games in the past, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when I'm on about shock out of chicanes. But this is for only new people who are deciding to uh, give this a go for the first time. So here's the third chicane anyway coming up. Take a left before the corner. And you can basically just skip across the grass, lovely. And that's it. One more long right-hander to go. And that is the end of that. Now, 25% distance is, I believe, I think it's 13 laps in Monza. So I think we've got to do 13 laps. But, as I said, the two achievements we're going to be getting is Annihilation. So that's a lap in the second driver while you're in first place. And it only goes skin deep, which is winning the 25% race in wet conditions. So this pole position, that's all good. Now what you can do then is just start. And now it took me about lap six. Took me till about lap six to um, get up to Max Verstappen there in second place and get him lapped. Now for some reason, the achievements, both of these achievements didn't unlock the first time that I went through this race. So if that does happen, either completely quit out of the main menu quickly um, and then go back in. Because that's how I got that achievement to unlock there. This is actually my second time of doing this. It didn't unlock, so I completely quit out, went back into it, and then it unlocked. And I'll show you a little trick, because the achievement here for winning the race at the end didn't unlock either. So, again, that's... I mean, it's easy enough, but, as I said, if it does unlock, completely quit out, go back into it, and hopefully it should unlock. Some of these achievements do have... Uh, there he is, my boy. Sebastian Vettel, my boy. Yeah, some of these achievements sometimes have either trouble tracking, or a couple of them have trouble... Uh, just unlocking in general, so as I said, always quit out of the main menu and go back into it. Because as you're supposed to see, now it's supposed to be da ding Winning a 25% race in wet conditions, of course that'll probably take you, uh, how long is it there, about 30... Oh, 37 minutes? Yeah, probably about 35 to 40 minutes, Depend depends how good you are really. Because um, me, I kept going off all sorts of stuff. But anyway, as I said, it hasn't unlocked, so... Again, if that does happen, we are just going to dashboard out, completely quit out to the dashboard, go back into it, load yourself in, and then it should finally unlook. Damn bloody goddamn did that dog damn annoying. Anyway, once that is done, time to go to Grand Prix number well, Grand Prix number whatever Grand Prix it is. So after it communicates with the online servers, let us now go to uh Korea. There we go. We just got another supercar token, that'll do. This is what I mean. So we need to drive 10 more miles in F1 right there. Single player, Grand Prix, this time we're going to drop down, a tell a little, little drop down, we're going to go to F2 this time. So, we are actually going to go with F2 2021. And then we're going to choose Austria this time. So again, this, all we have to do then is, we've just got to do the sprint race and the feature race at medium distance. And you've, you've got to finish both races. So you can select the team here, any team, I just go with Prima Racing, this is Oscar Piastri. Because he is one of my favourite drivers, and I hope he does well in F1. Although the McLaren car looks like it's got some, uh, <laughs> looks like he's got a bit of sand in there. Anyway, any team, any driver, we're going to go over to weekend structure, qualifying again, one shot, race format, sprint, and feature. So again, you do have to win even at 25% distance each. It is the sprint and feature race you've got to do, and then session length, of course, medium again. This time for the weather and time of day, we can go quick weather. There we go. Yep. Quick weather, clear, dry. And then session start time, midday. And then finally, for rules and flags. For rules and flags. Put rules and flags, corner cutting only. And corner cutting stringency, regular. So as long as the top two are corner cutting only and regular, we can now, well, we can just make a start for it. Um, now, in terms of the F2 cars and how they handle... They hand pretty much the same as they do in F1. Um, obviously, there's just a bit of reduction in performance. Speed, it's obviously a little bit slower. Acceleration is not as sharp as an F1 car, of course. Um, now, obviously, when you 
Well, basically, we are going to do pole position. We are going to do the one shot qualifying. When you qualify on pole here, you will start 10th, obviously, as you know, in F2. Wherever you start for the sprint race, it's reverse, so you'll start 10th. So all you've got to do then is just go ahead and... Now, you don't have to win. Again, this... The achievement is completing an F2 Grand Prix with a sprint and feature race at 25%. So you don't have to win. But, as I said, you should, because it's on the AI is still on very easy, you should have literally no problems. I mean, look at that start there. Oscar, Welsh under Piastri here, just absolutely flying it, mate. Um, but yeah, so this is all you got to do then is just complete the sprint race and the feature race. Oh, straight into Schwartzman. No, I missed it. <laughs> so complete this one, complete the feature race. It's going to take a little bit longer, of course. The feature race has a couple more laps. But as soon as you've done that, you will get the F2 Flyer achievement. In fact, we were so good that I'm actually just going to lap uh, Tan Dictum. Ah, oh, Dan, you son of a... This is why no F1 teams will hire you, Dan Tictum, because you are a dictum. Just remove the T and add the D, and that's what you are. But uh, honestly, if you don't know who he is, his attitude is disgusting in real life as well, and he basically conned himself out on F1 drive. Uh, although he is a quick, quick racing driver. Right, there we go. So once that is done and complete, F2 fly is all good, and now you can just go through the advanced screen and all that stuff. Um, now we've just got a couple of more achievements left to grab in Grand Prix mode. You don't have to do F2 anymore. So once we're here, then we can go back to Grand Prix. And basically what we're going to do now is complete 250 overtakes and do 25 perfect pit stops. So we are going to do go back to Austria then. So F1 2022, we're going to go back to Austria and we're going to make, uh, again, pick a team, any team. Um, I think I go for a nice bit of Sebastian right here because he is the love of everyone's life. And if you don't if you don't admit it, well, it's still false because you are a Sebastian Vettel fan. Everyone is. So, again, any team, any driver, go to weekend structure, standard, practice format off, one shot for qualifying format, session length can be very short. Uh, weather and time of day should still be clear, dry, and uh, midday. Again, sometimes it does change, so that's why we have to check it every single time. Uh, and then go to rules and flags again. And it's corner cutting only, corner cutting stringency regular, park Fermi rules on, and pit stop experience immersive. So as long as those options are good, then we can just go back and head and uh, start the event. So select the st start event into one shot qualifying. What we're going to do, we're going to start the lap, and then we're just going to retire from the session because we actually need to be starting from the back of the grid. So once you've done that and retired, what you're going to do, you can literally... Again, if you press the left bumper there to use your ERS as well, I'll give you an even bit of better speed. We're just going to do 250 successful overtakes here. So go up as far as you can until you crash into someone. Now, what you're supposed to do then, uh, you can press the select button and that will give you the flashback. Now, you, it, it may take a couple of seconds. Um, so it, the flashback button doesn't appear always. So get up as far as, yeah, yeah just to sort of... That you last, that you still last. So you can literally just go smash, press the select button, and then again, now what you have to do, the replay uh, replays on its own. So if you press the left trigger, it will put you back a bit. Otherwise, you'll actually keep going forward and you'll miss the point. So that's all we're doing then until the flashback achievement and uh, 250 achievement unlocks. But that is all, all you got to do then. So just always be careful with the replay right there. Make sure you're pressing the left trigger so that it goes back to the start. Uh, so from here, then, what we can do is we can just restart the session. Uh, so what we need to do now is 25 perfect pit stops. So, so again, the 250 overtakes will take about four, maybe five, six minutes. But again, just be aware that the flashback does take, a, for some reason, it takes like 30 seconds or something to appear. So we're, not, we're just going to chill. We're going to take our tape. You can crash. You can do whatever you want. But we are going in for a pit stop now. Now, normally, Sebastian Vettel would be absolutely flying past Stroll, Schumacher and the likes. Right, what we could do then, hit the right bumper, hit uh, right on the D-pad and ask for a pit stop. Once that is done, um, we can, well, we'll basically just get straight to the end after crashing. <laughs> so when we get to the end of the lap, which is going to be about now, 
Yes, there it is. Oh, in fact, no, I might just go for it. Alex! Alex Albon, you Eminem looking son of a god. Yep. Yeah, Alex Albon getting his Slim Shady vibes out there, trying to push me off the track. Right, you see this blue line? Right, take your time. Now, to get the perfect pit stop, as soon as we start, again, we'll be using the flashbacks, so just be aware of that one. It, uh, your car will be taken automatically. Now, what you're supposed to do is press the A button on screen, not now. When you see optimal, turn in. As soon as it gets to about 0.1 to 0.4, then press the A button. That will give you an optimal uh, pit stop, and that is exactly what we need. So again, you do flashback. Again, press the left trigger so you can go sort of as far back, maybe as you can, just so you get yourself nice and ready. Uh, but that's how you do a perfect pit stop. So you just go in. As soon as you see it go to about 0.1 to 0.4, press the A button, and that is how you will do that. Again, if you miss it for whatever particular reason, again, obviously, just uh, go back, flashback, and that will be fine. Um... Now, sometimes what I found, I ended up having to do more than 25 because uh, I, I've done, I replayed, done a flashback too quick. So wait until they start working on a couple of your tires, at least just for a second or two, and then do a flashback. And uh, then the 25, they should unlock then at the 25. But that is how you do that. So again, as soon as it gets to about 0 0.4, 0 0.1 to 0 0.4, that is where the optimal line is. And after about five minutes... The achievement will unlock. Here we go. Yay! The rare achievement zone is... Man, I should be a Formula 1 racer. But actually, what I... I actually went in an open wheel uh, car once, and I was absolutely crappy and terribly slow. So maybe I'm not going to be that. So once you've got those two achievements anyway, we can go ahead and abandon the race. We're going to return to the menu. And we're going to do an, another medium race, but we're not actually going to finish that race, luckily. And we're going to the people's favourite, Monaco. Now, I don't know about you, but I absolutely suck the butt cavities out of Monaco. I am useless. Um, but, I mean, it's not too bad because you can use flashbacks as much as you want. So, F1 2022, make sure that the highlight is at Monaco. Again... Like I said, this is a partial race that we're not going to finish. Select a team, any team. I'm going for a bit of uh, Danny Rick this time. Because I do love Danny Rick. And I'm gutted he's not on the grid this year. So unless Checo does crappy, maybe Ricardo goes back to Red Bull. Huh? That'd be nice. I would like to see him win a championship, Danny Ricardo. Because I definitely did rate him more than Max Verstappen when they were at Red Bull. But anyway, that's uh, for people's personal preferences. So, done a weekend structure. Weekend structure standard, practice format off, qualifying one shot and session length medium should still be on there, which is fine. Weather and time of day should still be on there for you, but it's not. It's clear and dry and midday. That's what we need to go with. Rules and flags. Again, rules and flags, corner cutting only, corner cutting stringency regular, park firmware rules on, pit stop experience broadcast, make sure that's on broadcast. Safety car increased, safety car experience broadcast, formation lap on. So again, make sure the safety car experience is set to broadcast, formation lap on, formation lap experience immersive, and the weekend tire allocation you can just leave because that is as a default as a defaulted deed. Indeed, indubitably, old chum. Now you can go to simulation settings actually, and then put car damage and car damage rate both down to reduced. So as long as they are both to reduced car damage and car damage rate, reduced, reduced, then we are ready to go. So we are going to do pole position and we are going to slot. Uh, so basically the next achievement we're going to be going for is slotting into the grid starting box 10 times. Now it is similar as it was with the pit stops, but you don't have to get a purple optimal one. You can get a green good one that counts as slotting in as well. So just go ahead, do the qualifying lap. Again, always make sure, uh, make use of your flash and backings. Don't flash your gash back. Don't flash your back gash. It's, uh, nobody wants to see it. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, do people have weird fetishes, don't they? So maybe people do. Um, right, so once we are on to pole position, you will have to do the formation lap as well, which is all good. So um, it's literally just a case of obviously ma maintaining position. Just chilling out, but you will have to do basically one full lap. And then at the end of the lap, of course, we will be slotting into our grid slot 10 times. And then we're going to basically, yeah, piss everyone off when the race starts. So what you need to do there, you need to slow right down. 
And then you basically have to stop when the marker here is either at green or purple. So if it's green, so you can stop there. Okay. Well, that was, that was how to do it wrong. That was red. So if it goes red and you end up missing it, immediately, you have to be quite quick with it. So immediately just go back, use a flashback, and then try it again. If you take too long and everyone starts lining up, you will actually have to do another formation. You'll have to restart it and do another formation lap. So as soon as it says good here and you see the tick, um, flashback and just go again. And again, we will have to do this 10 times, but you won't have to do it just all purple optimal. Even if it's green, it says good. That's fine. That will count as slotting in. So there we go. That is green. That's purple. As soon as it, again, as soon as you get there and you've stopped and it goes away, that's job done. You can just uh, flashback it again. Try not to... Obviously, this is the easiest way to do it, so you don't have to do 10 formation laps, because that'll just take a little while longer. Okay. But once that's done, that should be the 10th one. Again, this may take... It depends, because I went through... I think I went through about four or five times where I completely kept going, shooting over. And I started to piss me off, lad. So once that achievement is done, what we can do now, we are actually going to start the race prim, true, and proper. Now, and then what we're going to do, we're basically going to take the first corner and then block the way. Uh, so what that will do then is get the safety car out, and then all you've got to do, you have to spend about a lap and a half just catching up with the safety car. And that's it, and that is how you will get on to the, uh, that's how you get the Spotlight on Me achievement. So, as I said, we'll make a start. Go, go, go. If a couple of cars do sneak past you, don't worry about it, because the safety car will still unlock. So... Get ahead first or second, and then immediately just try and block the path here. And then just keep taking a look, and if anyone tries to sneak past, you say, Hey, this is my papa. This is my papa. And you just wait until the safety car is deployed, and then we are good to go. So the, for the first bit then, for the, for the rest of the lap, what you have to do is stay within the green delta sign. Of course, on the top right-hand corner. So just go ahead, go around the uh, track as normal. You can take, you can literally be as slow as you want. It should be fine. But again, just uh, make sure that the delta there is in the green. Once that is done, uh, you will, basically, once you go over the, the finish, start, finish straight, uh, the delta will go away so you can be as fast or slow as you want until you catch the safety car. Again, it took me about a lap and a half. I actually, I actually catch the safety car. So there you go. We've just gone over the start, finish line. The, the delta's gone so you can be as slow or fast as you want. But I ended up catching the safety car in the tunnel, so it did take me about a lap and a half. Once you are done here, you'll automatically slow down, and you will automatically go into the AI mode. And because you were the one that caused the problem, Daniel Ricardo, hit you. Oh, I missed Daniel Ricardo at number one. <laughs> anyway, that's how you get the spotlight on me achievement, and we are done with Grand Prix mode. Yep, that's it. Now we can just chill out and we can now go back out. We're going to do some Pirelli hot laps now. Now, these are basically challenges, but with supercars instead. It's all fun, right? It's all fun on the burn. So head over to um, Solo. Go over to the right there where it says Pirelli hot laps. Um, so basic, there's basically six kinds of challenges uh, on F1 tracks. Each car and each event is basically, it's, it's all locked in. You can't pick and choose what you want. Um, so the six, but we only need to do one of each to get the achievement. And you need a gold medal. And they are easy enough as well. So first off then, we're going to do an average speed zone. Now, it really depends on what tracks that you prefer. Again, the supercars handle incredibly different, by the way, as you will see. Um, I went to Belgium because I just prefer Belgium. Again, for this one, you can go to any track that suits you or that you prefer. Completely up to you. But as I said, have a go. Because obviously the supercars are completely different to the F1 cars in terms of speed, how they handle, and under braking as well. So you have to brake a lot earlier for a supercar. Um, but the average speed, they're not normally too long anyway, these um, Pirelli hot challenges. So, obviously, if you are doing Belgium, it will be in the wet. You can't pick and choose. Just take your time here. Go into a rouge because you will actually fly off to the left. So, take your time. Brake as quick as you can. We just need the average speed here of 100, which should be absolutely and very easily doable because the finish line here is at the straight. And skablamo! There we go. So, that is gold medal one done already. 
Now, for the next one, we're going to do a specific track, and it's going to be the United States Grand Prix in the McLaren Artura. And the reason being, basically, um, as you all know, the US Grand Prix, it's a wide track. A couple of track, um, obviously, the, the track's very good, but the straights are fantastic for drifting because there's a couple of long straights on there, of course, and some good turns as well. Um, now, drifts are kind of weird. Now, in normal games, you'd have to do an actual drift, um, but the points in this actually go up, even if you just go onto the side a little bit. So if you literally just flick the tail out for like a second or two, you'll get points for it. So you don't actually have to do an incredibly mega drift like you do on, say, the Forza games, Gran Turismo, etc. So we only need 3,250 points. It's very easy. It's honestly very easy. Um, and even if you run out of time, that's fine. Just as long as you've got the points, then you should be good to go. So as you'll be able to see then, as soon as you start going, look at that. I've only just gone to the side a tiny little bit and I'm starting to get some points already. And we all know that this lap is kind of long. So that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Again, try to obviously keep the controls drifted because if you do a mega 360 spin, you will lose your points. If you go off the track at all, you will also lose your points. Uh, but apart from that, it is as easy as that. The other thing, once you do get the gold medal, that's fine. But what we're going to do then is replay this track basically twice. Uh, because there is an, an achievement called Drifty. And that's for drifting for a total of three minutes. So you will get the gold score. I, you know, <laughs> I mean, look at this. I could have probably got it by now. But we're only a thousand away already. And we've only hit the, what is it, like the fourth or fifth corner. Um, but yeah, so that's what we'll be doing then. So just keep drifting until we get the score for now. That's gold, gold. Always believe in your drift. You know I don't give a shit. Tucky mushroom, because mushrooms are the devil's food. Right, so as you can see then, very, very easily. So now, I'm not sure if restarting the session would actually help. So what I done was advance, go through all that, and uh, go back on it. Again, you have to do this probably a one and a half times. Another full one. And then another time in order to get the Drifty achievement right there. Once you do have the Drifty achievement for drifting for three minutes, we can just go ahead back out. And then we are going to get another achievement here. So we're going to go to the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix. Basically Imola, San Marino, with the McLaren 720S. So this is basically a straightforward thing. It's literally just a checkpoint challenge. Um, so you're literally just gunning it. Go as quick as you can. Um, I can't remember if it was raining. I don't think it was, actually. Um, no, it's not. But, yeah, so what it, to get the gold, you need 8,000 meters, and it's roughly almost two laps. About It's about 1.7, 1.8 meters. Um, so it's basically, effectively, almost two full laps. But what we're going to do, after we have done a full lap, we're going to do flashback. And just keep crossing the line. Flashback, keep crossing the line to get the achievement for completing 25 laps in a supercar. Yes, it works like that. What you're also going to see, every time you go through a checkpoint, first of all, you will get 20 seconds. And then the next one, you'll get a second less. The next one, you'll get a second less. And it'll just keep going, basically, until you run out of time. So as you can see here, I now get, what's that, 16 seconds or 15? Oh, my eyes are so bad. So we've all, we've basically done a full lap. Again, as soon as you start this start finish line, which was just there, go ahead and flash back. There you go. I don't, I took my time with it. Uh, go ahead and flash back. Put yourself just so you're pretty much close close enough to the start finish line. Now the only reason I went a little bit more is just I gave it a couple of seconds just so that it would actually count. So here's the finish line, but I just kept going only for a second or two to make sure it counted. And then all you're doing then you just keep doing this. So keep flashbacking, keep going over the line. I love that this has worked like that. And eventually the achievement should unlock then for uh, the, getting the hang of it for driving 25 laps in a supercar and in the game mode. 
So there it is. So once it's unlocked, don't flash back again, or if you prefer, flash back, and then we're just going to make a break for it again. Now, basically what we have to do is effectively get to almost the last corner of the lap. Now again, just don't look at the seconds. As long as you still break in, you're sort of getting used to the supercar. Um, oh, in fact, no, we're getting 8,000 meters now. So it's a bit, a bit further than I thought. After you get the 8,000 anyway, you can literally just wait for the time to count down. Gold medal number three and on to autocross. And on to autocross it is. Now again, this is another one where you can just pick any one that you want. Um, I just picked Spain. I don't know why there was any particular preference there. I do like the Spanish track. But again, we're going for autocross. And it's, um, again, any particular track that you prefer. If there's one track that suits you better, then of course, by all means, go for it. So, really hot lap. Now, if you don't know what autocross is, they're basically like little gates we have to go through. If you miss a gate... You, uh, so basically, if you get through a gate without hitting them, um, you'll get a, t a five second time penalty. Or if you go just basically past them all together, you'll get a t 10, 10 second time penalty. So you need to be quite fast, but you do need to be careful as well. So it's a bit slow, fast. It's hard to, uh, sort of think of this one. So you obviously need to be fast because the supercars, remember, they handle a bit crappier than the F1 cars, of course, because it's not an F1 car. So you do need to be slightly quick, but uh, slow as well. Now, I think I ended up hitting two of these gates, two of these cones, two of these bollards, whatever you want to call them. Um, but I still did have plenty of time here. It's not a full lap either, so don't worry about that. But as you can see, the gold medal time is 2 minutes and 10. And we've pretty much beaten it in, well, 1.45 there. So we had, what's that, 25 seconds spare, plus an extra 10 seconds I had for penalties. Oh, it's all good. Once that is done, it'll obviously tell you the results. And the XP, which I don't actually... I didn't actually have a look at anything else. Oh, there we go. Look, so two gates hit. Ten seconds. So it should be easy enough. Again, if you find yourself struggling, of course, you can just use the flashbacks as usual. Or just restart it and go again. But it's not too bad. Right. Next up, then, is Time Attack. And this is... Pretty much the exact same as the checkpoint challenge. But what you got to do, and we're going to go for Austria for this one because Austria is not too bad. Be aware it is raining though this time. So go normal again, of course. Uh, but again, this is the same as checkpoint challenge as I was saying. But this time you need to complete two laps within a time limit. So you basically do have to drive as fast as you can still. Um, to be honest, there's not that much spare time. You can still do it very easily. As we begin now... And then, as you can see, so you, so we've got two laps to do here in 3 minutes and 35 seconds. I think I ended up beating it with about 10 seconds left. So, you do have to be quick. Of course, you can, uh, obviously, try, try, I mean, it's easier said than done. But, obviously, try and pinpoint your breaking points exactly. And then, there we go. So, with the end, so 3 minutes and 24. So, beat it with about 10 and a half seconds left. So, it's not too bad. Again, if we've gotten to this point in the game, you should have a definite inkling of how the tracks are and how the supercars handle. Right, last up then, we can do the Rival Duel. Now again, it doesn't matter what track it is, but basically, this is another round-based challenge, but you are basically head-to-head -head against someone. Now, to get the gold medal, you have to beat your rival three times. So basically, in round one, you'll start in front, and you just got to stay in front. Round two, we're going to start side by side, and you'll need to overtake him to win. And in round three, you'll start behind, and you'll still need to overtake your opponent to win. Also, be very careful, but in this challenge, you can be disqualified for uh, cutting the corner lots of times. So, obviously, try and try your best to just keep within the green stuff. So, right on the tarmac. So, again, because it's on very easy anyway, you really shouldn't have any problems. So it's literally just a case of doing these last couple of corners here on Belgium. As soon as you get to the start finish straight, that is where it ends. Uh, that is where the checker flag is. Job done.
So here we go then, like I said, even on easy, you will, <laughs> or normal mode, you should literally be able to, to flat, literally get past him even before this first corner here. So that's what I decided to do. Yippee! And then once you have won that, you will then get the all gold all around achievement. And that's exactly what we want. Soon as we get to the end. Aha! Loser! And there we go. So we are now almost done. And then we'll finally be starting on the longest. Apart from the multiplayer, the longest part of the single player anyway, which is the team career. So after this, you'll obviously go through the normal screens here at the end. We're going... We've got that, so we will get the gold all-around achievement. Now for the next one, what we're going to do is fill all the supercar bays in F1 Life. There's the achievement, should unlock 1.60. Right, so go back, and then what we need to do is go back to F1 Life. We're going to go down to um, supercars. And then what we... Now, because you've gone this far, you should have enough supercars, supercar tokens to spend... So you can literally pick, uh, you should have six, at least six, and because that's what we need to fill the bay. So pick any six supercars that you want. And then, of course, just select again, yes, to confirm. There we go. And then press the A button again here to accept it. So just pick all six for now. Now let's go ahead up and fill in, fill in, fill in, super cool, base boy. Yeah. All right, so what we can do, we can now, basically, we're on to the view your supercar screen. So what you need to do is uh, highlight and select each one and then put any car you want in. So you've got bay one, so go to bay two, press A to add car, then add the next one and just keep doing that until all six are filled and you'll get the supercar superstar, DJ. Here we go! This is still weird for an F1 game, mind. You think... I mean, to be honest, what I prefer to see in an F1 game is... Do you remember F109? They used to have the challenges, like uh, you were Nick Heidfeld in the Nürburgring and you had to go and try and overtake someone. I'd love to see real-life F1 challenges made into the game. I think that would... Personally, I think that would be better than the supercars, but there we go. Hopefully, Codemaster take a listen and go from there. But we will see. So once that is done, you've filled all six and get the Supercar Superstar event. Go to multiplayer. Get, then go to weekly event. Now, you don't actually have to take part in this weekly event, which is noisy and slicey. You can literally just go straight to pack practice or straight to qualifying. Go to event. Again, it literally doesn't matter. We're not going to bother with assist this time because we are literally... Just going to go in, smash ourselves up like an absolute bad boy, man. We're going to smash ourselves up like a bad boy, man. And that was what will get us the weekly warrior achievement. Formula One, STC. That stands for sexually transmitted disease, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, once we start, of course, as I said, we are just going to smash ourselves up. And it's going to be goddamn glorious. Meow. What a smash, son. What a hit. What a hit, son. Get in there. Right, once you have done, you can retire from the session and the Weekly Warrior achievement will unlock. Obviously, advance then beyond the results screen. And now all the... We're basically done now for all the Grand Prix stuff. Now we're going to go on to my team career. Now, this is a long one. It, it's a long one. Um, purely because... We are now going to be a team owner, so we have to mess around and do things like um, contracts, the R&D, which is the resource and development, all team boss ownery stuff. And there, of, of course, are a bunch of achievements tied to it as well. Ah, So I will try to explain as best I can. Now, so basically, after every race, what we're going to do um, is we're just going to do this like a little checklist that we can basically follow which normally be which would normally be seeing what we can upgrade on the car because again there's a couple of achievements tied to that um 
doing the activity so that we can boost our teammates uh bleh, teammates stats up as it were you need to do that 10 times anyway for an achievement so well, there we go then so we're going to choose my team we're going to choose championship contender so not newcomer not midfield challenger but championship contender and then choose the custom season type here so custom season so what you can do you can do full 22 16 or 10 races of course what we're going to do is choose the 10 races and that is fine um we're going to be just going back in and out and starting new ones first so for the time being we don't actually need to bother messing around with any settings or anything so go to custom settings anyway once you've confirmed 10 uh what we are going to do is we're going to go to assists there we go so head to assist driving proficiency custom again make sure the steering and braking assist is off anti-lock brakes are on traction control dynamic racing line is full the the dynamic racing line type is 3D. Gearbox automatic, pit assist on, ERS off, and DRS on. So make sure that is like that. And then practice format, what we're going to do. When we go to weekend structure, sorry, again. So again, practice format is always going to be full. That's fine. Qualifying format, one shot. And then session length is going to be short. That's as short as we can get. On to career settings. We're going to put driver moves on. Facility management and R&D management all on. So make sure they're all switched on. And again, it seems complicated first, but it gets easier when you know what you're doing. Header rules and flags. Corner cutting only. Uh, regular for the corner cutting stringency. Park Fermi rules on. Pit stop experience broadcast. And then we're going to go to simulation settings. Again, AI difficulty all the way to the left on zero. So it's very easy. Surface type simplified. Recovery mode, flashbacks, car damage off. There we go, car damage off. Low fuel mode, easy. Race starts, assisted. And then collisions on. So that is all good. Right, so once we've confirmed the settings, now, because we've done those settings, now they will, they will remain done, even if we start a new career. So what we can do is just go ahead and use my team icons. Now, the first time that you play through this, there is a guy talking, obviously basically just talking you through the whole thing, this guy right here, but you can't, oh, I wasn't able to skip it the first time. So what we can do is basically, when you get up to all this part, we're just, we're not gonna change absolutely anything until we get to team details. And this is very important. So what we're going to put, we're gonna put the team name as whatever you want. So again, what you do is just keep uh, advancing, and then what we're going to do is press the primary sponsor for DSB Optics here, the very first one. The power, unit, the, the power unit supplier, what we're going to do here is do Mercedes first. So we need to make sure to do Mercedes first. That's very important for an achievement, what we're going to get straight away. And then as you can see, the icons, what you can pick, you can either pick a legend, Schumacher, Senna, Prost, but it'll obviously cost you more, where you can't upgrade your facilities as much. Or you can just pick someone on the lower spectrum. I always end up picking usually Oscar Piastri. I chose Dan Tictum here, basically one of the F2 drivers, um, because it's better to have more money. Basically, with Schumacher or Senna or anything like that, you can just win the Constructors' Championship easier, but everything else gets a little bit more complicated. So we always go with the cheaper driver. So after you've done all that, we're not changing anything. We're just going to advance, go into the next one, advance, advance, and advance. And we're going to get two achievements straight away. Uh, and that is for upgrading the pit crew equipment to the max level in my team and reopening a facility that has been shut down for more than seven days. And again, you can only get these in team mode. Right, so every single time you start, you have to go through the Will Buxton interview. So it doesn't matter what options you pick for now. Um, I... We will obviously need to pick specific options later on, but for now we can just say whatever. Will will be will be asking questions like, "Oh, hey, did you know in a Formula One car, if you get pole, you will start from the front of the grid?" And be like, "Yes, will we got it by Senior Drive to Survive, pal? No worries." And he'll also say stuff like, uh, "Did you know that if Formula One cars didn't have wheels, you wouldn't be able to drive anywhere?" Yeah, uh, cheers, Will. Thanks. You don't have to say anymore. If the, if the Formula 1 car was an aeroplane, you wouldn't be able to drive on the track. All right, damn it, I get it. Jeez. All right, Michael Owen of the football world. They only won 1-0 because they scored a goal. Fantastic. Cheers, Michael Owen. All right, so 
Again, you can literally, as you can see there anyway, with the, with the questions and answers, you could probably see things like your durability department knows that, powertrain, chassis, etc. When we get to our main career here, well, a little bit later on, when we get to our main career, we have to do a job where we have to kind of keep all four happy. Um, and it's easy enough because it's literally just a case of upgrading. So you literally just go, let's upgrade there. If somebody's morale is low, you'll just put some upgrades into there and you get that with resource points. And again, I will explain that in just a bit. But for now, what you're going to do then, as you can see on the top of the page right there, we're going to fly over right bumper once to facilities, go all the way to the right to personnel. And then what you can do, you can see the pit equipment there at the bottom. So press the A button here to upgrade it for six million. Six million dollar dues. And then that is done. So that'll be on its way. So what we can do then, while we are here as well, so obviously when we advance time, we will that will unlock anyway. So we can just go down now to marketing and press the X button here to shut down the facility. This is very important to get two easy achievements out of the way here. So shut down the facility. And then we can go back to the overview. So left bumper once, back to the overview. And as you can see, you've got R&D, uh, vehicle, corporate standings. Again, I'll explain more of that later on. But for now, we're just going to advance. As you can see, every week you will get from your sponsors and everything, you'll get some money, etc. And eventually on the 16th, the pit equipment will update. And there we go. That'll give us the equipped with the best achievement. Now, before going, what we can do is head back down to marketing. So go over to facilities with the right bumper. Go to facilities, press the X button to restart the facility. And that will also get you the back online achievement achievement. Right then, so now we can go to the race weekend. Basically, a couple of achievements that we have to do is, for the first one, we need to win a race with a Mercedes engine, easy. Then we need to win a race, a French race with the Renault, France, France for France, and we need to do Red Bull in Austria, basically. Um, but it's just a case of making a new career and going through it again. So once we begin, this is our little work top station, work desk. Um, so we, are, we will now load into practice at one. You don't actually have to drive, um, so what you need to do, we can actually just, as soon as we go into it, we can basically just retire. Again, all of the stuff I will explain when we get to our main career part, so no worries about that. Resource points, though, if you do want to know how to get resource points, you can get a lot of them during practice. Now, when we do start our main career, we will be participating in the first five practice sessions um, in order to get the pure power achievement for being first in the speed trap in five different practice sessions. Um, and we will also be getting some resource points as well. So, so, you, so you get resource points from pretty much everywhere, but the main source that you can get them from is during practice. So once we begin, we can just go ahead and not crash because as it turns out, oh, I put the damage off, didn't I? So we can just go ahead, retire from the session. Now, what we can actually do, we can actually just go ahead and skip all the way to... I, I'm pretty sure you're, you're able to skip to the race. So, have a look down, but I'm pretty sure you're able to skip to the race, uh, which we will be doing. Um, unless, of course, well, it's completely up to you. Obviously, you've got five laps in order to take the lead and win. Um, we do need to win a race with the Mercedes engines, but once you've done qualifying anyway... It depends whatever you want to do. If you want to do qualifying to start from the front, obviously be my guest. If not, and you want to save a couple of minutes or so, just we'll just head straight for the race. And you've just got to do, um, just got to overtake another 19 cars in order to end up to in the lead. Ba -bam. So once it all starts and it all kicks off. A new season, then a clean slate where anything can Cheers, Crofty, you big sandwich loving West Ham fan. I feel, I feel dirty being in a Mercedes car now. I bet George Russell feels dirty, doesn't he? Oh, wait, no, I did retire. Sorry, I didn't even I didn't even do this one. Uh, I bet George Russell feels done over, doesn't he? Eight years of Mercedes dominance in the year George Russell gets in a car. <laughs> it's the third best one on the grid. <laughs> and every, everyone in Mercedes is going mad and Toto Wolf is literally chainsawing tables off in his house. That's how pissed off he is. Anyway, again, like I said, it doesn't matter where you start. Um, I went for the last place because why the hell not? And then as soon as you've taken the lead and you've won, of course, like I said, there we go. So, oh, here we go. Just going for an overtake on Charlie boy. Oh, Charlie boy. 
Get the hell out of my way. Don't worry, you won't win because uh, Ferrari strategists will probably, well, they'll probably mess you up. Although I do hope Fred Vasseur does a better job this year. Uh, I hope he does the job for Ferrari. Anyway, once we have... I think this is where I spin out like a noob. Hey! Noobified! Completely spinning out right there. Anyway, as I said, the reason this is obviously going to take the longest, the, the my team and my career, is of course we've got to do two extra laps where we couldn't... where we, where we could only do three before. And you've obviously got to do these little checklists. Now, as I said... The checklists seem complicated, but it's literally going to be after each race. It's just going to be a case of how many resource points have we got? Have a look on the R&D section. See what needs to be upgraded. Because um, basically they'll have numbers on the R&D screen. Here's the first achievement, by the way, Mercedes Master. Um, yeah, so with the R&D, they'll basically have numbers. It'll say like 8 out of 27, 10 out of 27. Obviously, the low end of the number the sort of more upgrades that you want to be putting into there. Um, but again, I'll show you just the easiest method that I've done anyway. There are two achievements tied to that as well, um, which is for... Also, by the way, you've seen the personnel development. You need to do 25 of those developments throughout the game. So if you do see one, just go ahead quickly. It's literally just somebody asking you a question and you pick an answer. That's it. That's as easy as it is. Anyway, once you've done that, and we can go back now into... Uh, Korea. Oh, in fact, no, sorry, before we do that, we're going to head all the way right. We're going to check our mail. Sorry, just before, because we should, of course, have a trophy for winning uh, the Bahrain Grand Prix. So there is the trophy for the Bahrain Korea champion. So that's over on the player hub there on the right. So you've selected mail. You've got the trophy. Then what you need to do then is uh, after you claim it and claim it all, Back into the main menu, toggle over to the F1 Life tab and go to Trophies. The first slot will already be highlighted, so simply add the trophy. Highlight the Bahrain one. There it is, should be the only one. And you can place that in your cabinet slot and that will give you the Proud Owner achievement. Of course, you don't have to do that yet if you don't want, but eh, best to get it out of the way, isn't it right? So back over to Korea, single player Korea. We're going to start a new one. And then we're going to do basically everything that we just did. But with a... What are we going to do this time? We're going, we're going for Red Bull this time. So you can delete that. It literally makes no difference if you want. So again, my team again. Now, uh, Championship Contender again. And Custom Season. Now, when the guy starts talking to you, you uh, 10 races, you can literally just keep pressing the A button to skip over the um, dialogue. Whereas for some reason you couldn't the first time around, which is kind of annoying. And then, uh, but you can this time. So what we need to do is get rid of all the tracks up until Austria. So just make sure then, again, you can press the white button to get rid of and add a track. But make sure that Austria is the first track. And then you need to fill up the rest uh, to get 10. Once 10 is done... then we're good to go. As I said, just make sure the red ball ring there is... The one that is number, that is first. So removing tracks there, Bahrain, Miami, Spain, Canada, and Great Britain. Right, again, you can have a look, but every, all the assists should still be the same as we've done. So go ahead, go to uh, start career options. Now again, we're just going to advance. We're going to go on it, go on to the next one, and then team details. Now, just do the same thing again. Put team name, whatever you want you want. For the sponsor, again, we can just choose DDSB Optics. Now, this one, of course, make sure to choose Red Bull Powertrains. Very important for this achievement to choose the Red Bull Powertrains. And lastly, again, I just choose a cheap teammate, because why not? Go for a bit of Theo Pochiel this time. Once that's done, we can confirm. And then again, with the livery, just crack on. Team branding, just crack on and advance. Just keep advancing, keep going. And uh, this time, because we've obviously got the first two achievements, we can literally, um, we can just uh, advance the calendar through pre-season, begin round, uh, the first round. Oh, after we have a speak here with old William, is that a Formula One car driving at 200 miles per hour? That's how you know a Formula One car's fast, Buxton. So as I said, if you see any of these department notices, do it. Go to the event. You can't undo it really, but if you see them, 
before you quit out to go to the next one. Just do it anyway. It literally just asks you a question. You can either pick whatever one you want, pace awareness, anyone. But that will that is basically the first out of 25. So you can just advance. Go to the first, well, you've got to go season break and then the Austrian Grand Prix will appear. Um, and then after that, it's literally just what we've done with Bahrain. So as soon as you start practice one, retire from the session, go to the race, and then you will have to win the race. Again, whether you uh, qualify on pole or if you start from the back, you do have to do a sprint race, though. So it depends on how well or how not well you're driving in the game. Um, it's probably worth... As you can see, we've got practice one, then qualifying, practice two, then the sprint, and then the actual race itself. Now, I do decide to start from the back, and I think I only just about managed to win in this one. So, again, it depends. If you want to qualify on pole, of course, you go mad. Otherwise, as I said, practice one, retire, qualify on pole, start last, whatever, just as long as you win. If you don't win, of course, you can either just restart the session or try again in the next race. But, of course, that would just add a little bit of time. And anybody got time for that? Anybody got time for that? Oh, what a move! Carlos Sainz, Raya, man, fantastic! Where Nico Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton had their little coming together, little handbags and glad rags in, what was that, 2014, 2015? Right, once we have won, hopefully you have, and it's nice and easy. Look at that, Porsche is second, legend. Anyway, we will get the Red Bull Racer achievement for winning a race at Austria with a Red Bull engine. And then, of course, you can just go through all the advancement screens and all that jazz magoni. And we can just go through the whole thing again. But this time, we're going to choose the Renault E-Tech engine. So it's all the same, but this time we're going to choose the different tracks. We're going to remove Bahrain, Miami, Spain, Canada, Great Britain, and Austria. And then we're going to add the tracks France, Hungary, Singapore, Japan, USA, and Mexico. So your track list should be France first. Again, make sure that France is first. And then Hungary, Belgium, Netherlands, Italy, Singapore, Japan, US, Mexico, and Brazil. Once that's done, we're going to go again, go to custom settings, confirm the settings as usual, use my team icons, start career, and again, just smash through all this bit. So we, <laughs> we'll we come back with all that. And now we can create the team. Again, team name, we're just going to go, what do I say this time? Truk. Truk's a good team name. DSB Optics. Again, make sure to choose the Renault E-Tech engine this time. And then you can just choose uh, whoever you want. It literally doesn't make a difference. But this is the final time that we're going to be doing this. And then we're going to start the main career properly. Again, this is obviously going to take a little bit longer because you've got to do a bit of the racing. But once we have advanced, again, we will immediately just go into the advance. And as usual, we're going to start, um, retire from practice one, either qualify or don't. Um, but again, obviously I haven't, but we do have another five laps in order to smash through. So France isn't actually a bad track to race on. It's just really confusing. And if you've got problems with stripes, then <laughs> I wouldn't recommend looking at this race because your eyes are going to go, oing, 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 oing. what a start. Ah, oh, excuse me, Lance. Could you pity? If right, there we go. So just take an old, the old Spanish Easter. Now it's time to get rid of old Charlie Leck Cleck. There we go. The Eclair has been taken care of. Leclair has been Leclair and... Oh, no. I tried something. I failed. Right. So once anyway, once you have won again in the Renault E-Tech engine in the back, you will get the Renault Racer achievement. And then, as I said, we can finally start our main career properly. Now, we do, of course, have to do the full career and potentially a little bit after that. Um, but once that's done, it's just a couple of two-player achievements and the multiplayer achievements after all this then. So, let's just crack on then. So, after we've gotten through the advancement screens and we're back here, we can delete the save and let's do this, man! Let's do it! Right, on to my team. We're going to go Championship Contender, of course, again. Gives us the most money. Custom Season. Now, only three tracks we're going to remove this time. So, go to 10 races, then remove Miami because, you know... The track is just as good as the harbour. Crappy. Uh, Miami, Spain, and Netherlands. No offence to any Miamiists out there. 
and then add Australia, Mexico, and Abu Dhabi. So remove Miami, Spain, and Netherlands and add the tracks Australia, Mexico, and Abu Dhabi. So the final track list should be Bahrain, Australia, Canada, Great Britain, Austria, Belgium, Italy, highly important. We need Italy because we're going to use the Ferrari engine, Mexico, Brazil, and Abu Dhabi. So once we have, again, the assist should all be the same. If you want to have a double check there, obviously more than welcome to do that, but it should be the same once they are the same. We can just confirm the settings goes to team icons. This time we're going to do things properly. So what I ended up doing, I call myself Benadryl Cucumber Batch, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch, Benadryl, Benadryl Cucumber Batch. Yeah, you know the drill. Of course, um, my nickname in the game is going to be Wang because I don't know why Cody Croft Crofty calling me Wang is just hilarious. Yep. And of course, my driver number is, take a guess. Yep, there it is. 69. <laughs> because the childness in me is incredible. Again, clothing and emotes, you can just choose any helmets you want. I'm going to select this. It says relaxed, but it looks awkward. But that is pure wiener confidence, 100% right there, isn't it? This is shouting, hey, come look at my package. It's all for me. Uh, you can then choose an emote. Uh, this is just for after you win the race. I do the flying kick of pure flying kick of pure joy. And oh, this is me all over. Nice, nah, this is very nice. I know it's Borat all over, but uh, if it was me, it would be nice. It's very nice. Anyway, so this is for every time you win a Grand Prix. Okay, then we can advance. Just go ahead. Team details again. Very important now. So um, I'm actually going for a nice name. I chose. I called myself the Welsh Hunters. Uh, DSB Optics again, uh, we're just going to go with the top one. Now, again, highly important here, make sure to choose the Ferrari powertrain. So the Ferrari powertrain is the one we need. And then finally, again, you can get a Schumacher, a Senna, a Button, a Prost. We're just going to go with a 1 million. Um, basically, we need more money. I prefer to have more money for facilities, but that's up to you. Completely up to you, whatever you want to do. You can go for Massa, cool thought there for 4 mil. Um, I'm just going for a nice bit of Oscar Piastri, although I do like Liam Lawson as well, and Felipe Drogovic. Uh, but we just go for a big bit of Piastri. So once you have chosen them, we can now crack on. And uh, you can do stuff with the livery as well. So for every race weekend, what we're going to be doing, we need to try, we need to win the Drivers' Championship and the Constructors. So sometimes Oscar Piastri will always probably finish about 6th, 7th, 8th. If you've got a high-level driver, your Schumachers, your Senners, they will pretty much be up there with you. So the Constructors' Championship will come easy. Again, we've got a Will Buxton interview here. Now, did you know if you went into the water, you'd get wet? Thank you, Will. Thank you very much. Uh, now, this time, we're going to answer the questions, and we're going to try and answer them as fairly as you can. So the aero department, the chassis department, all get a bit of, you know, a bit of a boost. If you don't, uh, it really doesn't matter. It's not, it's not too bad. It's, you know, it's not the end of the world if you don't. Uh, so don't panic too much about that. Um, but obviously, I just want to do a quite a, kind of a bit of a, a lot of explaining about the checklist and what we've got to do before we crack on. So again, if you see something like um, the power, choose that one. If you then, you know, something else. Um... I'm not sure if the questions are random or if the answers are random, but just try and keep everyone happy. Again, no worries if not. So, like I said, Drivers and the Constructors Championship, we get two achievements of winning the Constructors and winning the Drivers. So sometimes, because Piastri's not a lot of help, really, you need to be taken off your Hamiltons, Russells, Sainz, Leclerc's, your Perez's, and your Verstappen's. Um, sometimes. We need to improve the stats of our teammate to get an achievement for boosting his stats 10 times. And of course, we'll be doing a lot with the resource and development, the R&D section, which is the development, of course, of the car. So here we are then starting. Well, let's just crack on with it. So because we chose the championship contenders, we got more money. We can put more sponsorship on the car. So it's not like HRT where they put their nan's son's surname on it or something. This is the R&D. There's the vehicles. Basically, that's if something starts going. Go over to corporate, and then what you can do is just the three plus signs right here. We can add three secondary responses. Now, you can have a look, see what one's best for you. What I ended up doing was just pressing the Y button to sort. That'll put the weekly income, the highest ones at the top, with a gold bonus as well. Uh, and I just chose the three highest weekly income. It's better to obviously get a higher weekly income. 
uh, than it is a goal bonus because the goal bonuses will only count if you win a race every couple of weeks. With a weekly one, obviously, the better, <laughs> the more the better, of course. Slingshot fuel. It gives you fuel up your slingshot to put it inside your Asiatic D dynamic. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so when you do all three, then just choose the th or first three or whichever one the options for you, uh, which have the highest um, bit of weekly money. Next up, we can go over to vehicle. So we'll go to vehicle next, and then we can go to the vehicle tab. Now, during races, your um, your radio, oh, man, why can't I say, your team radio guy will tell you something's getting a bit worn out, blah, blah, blah. When you come here, if the component here on the right is looking yellow, just replace it immediately. So you don't have to do it after every race, but after maybe every two or three races, come back. As long as they're all in green, that's good. If you see them change color and if it's a bit yellow, replace it straight away. So we'll come back to that later. Next up, we go into the facilities tab. Now, um, we are going to do an upgrade. Now, I just ended up doing the aerodynamics here. Um, basically, because we don't get... To upgrade a lot of this is going to cost money, a lot of money. So go down to resource point regeneration, because, of course, we need the more resource points. Uh, we need more resource points as possible. Um, marketing, you can just leave that as spec too. Chassis, uh, durability for me anyway was already spec 3, so that's all good. Uh, but we won't be coming back here much at all in the facilities. Um, now, if you wanted to know, you can also do the uh, personnel as well if you want. If you want to know, in the top right-hand corner, you'll see the money on the left, the resource points with the plus sign next to it. That is your resource points, and that is all good. Right, go to corporate, then go to contract. Now, press the Y button here for driver perks. As you can see, we're both doing the pure 100% winner confidence pose. But press the Y button to go into driver perks. And then press the Y button to go. Oh, there we go. So what we're going to do, we're going to prioritize the upgrading in the order. We're going to do developmental feedback first. So it's better to do it in this way. So development, developmental feedback, then social media team, which would be the top one. And then if you can, do power mapping. If not, and we don't have enough money, that's fine. We can just uh, come back and have a look at this later on. Next is the R&D one. So anytime that you've got um, resource points there with the plus sign, what you can do, now what I ended up doing was actually clicking on anything and then pressing the X button to, uh, basically the game's going to recommend a specific upgrade and that's just the way i do it so instead of going oh fa you know faffing about and thinking crap what am i gonna do what am i gonna do ah this is too much for me we're literally just gonna go press the a button press the x button to, and the game will recommend an upgrade then we will just upgrade that now doing that we'll keep the development sort of even across the departments um but remember of course if, if one department does fall behind that will drag the overall performance down of course we don't want that so, um, as you can see, I pressed the A button, uh, the X button. This is what it's done. You can go to standard. If you try to rush it, basically means that the part may have a higher chance of breaking, and there's just no point doing that. If it's standard, it takes a little bit longer, but literally nine times out of ten, you'll get the part successful. If it fails, don't panic again. If you don't have enough resource points, we, obviously, we are obviously not able to go over. So again, try and keep the morale sort of normal and high and try and keep everything as um, even as possible. So over to overview, the main sort of area now, we're going to go to activities tab with the right trigger. Now what you can see, we need to fill the timeline up with as many activities as we can. Now we're going to prioritize this again. On the bottom there, you see department morale, second driver statistics, and acclaim and resources. So what we're going to do, you press the A button on any of the dates, make sure whatever it says second driver statistics, and a lot of it is green. If a lot of it's green, that's good. Press the A button, that will get that one going. So now we go down to the eighth, press the A button. Next, we're going to go do department morale. So as you can see, you get two red, two green. So it's up to you depending on how you're feeling or whatever, but just pick one as long as most of the department morale is filled out again a lot of the times you'll pick stuff but then there'll be other options which will sort of balance that out again so don't panic about that and then we have no more days left in order to um do that so 
that's pretty much all we'd be doing. So as I said, we're going to check the vehicle after every race. The driver perks as well. The facilities we don't need to worry about. But the main two are the R&D and try and spend the resource points as quickly as we can and doing the activities. So this is exactly what we need. The two achievements, by the way, for the R&D are you need to get an upgrade in each department. Easy enough. And you need to get 15 upgrades in a single department, which we will probably more than likely do in the second season. So don't worry about that. You can have a scroll over to messages as well. That'll be fine, just fine. Uh, it's pretty much just to tell you, you know, hi there, here's my nipple. And that's it. Uh, so once we advance, of course, you're going to get money each week from all your sponsors. All the um, activities are going to be done. Any upgrades that you've requested through R&D will appear as well. So that's all good. And of course, if you do any personal development, then we can crack on. But otherwise, for now, what we can do, we can just advance the time, go to the next race weekend. Now, there, are, there is another achievement which we are going to be getting. A couple of achievements here. So, as I said, for the first two race weekends, we are going to be doing uh, the three practice sessions. The, re the, re the main reason, as I said, what we need to be doing... So we'll just be able to crack on with it straight away. Um, is So we can get first in the speed trap. And that, like I said, that's for the pure power achievement. And you need to do that across five different practice sessions. So you just need... It's pretty much easy. Bahrain and Australia, there's speed traps at the, at the end of the first corner. So with DRS and everything on, you should pretty much get around 200 miles an hour each. Very easy. What we also need to megaly important do, because of course we need a lot of resource points in order to do some good upgrading. When you press the X button, you can see three things here. Race strategy, tire management, and qualifying pace. This is a sort of a practice session thing. Obviously it is a practice session, but the team wants you to do specific stuff in order to get more resource points and more developmental boosts. So, and when we go out, it will tell you exactly what you need to do, i.e. try and stay on the racing line or don't go within two meters, um, fuel efficiency there, try and be as fuel efficient as you can, activate the drag reduction system in all things, and then the resource awards here, as you can see, get 50 points, uh, try and score 30 points. Um, so obviously, to get more developmental boosts and to try and get more resource points, try and do these as good as you can. If you only get two, three, four, or even five out of five, it doesn't matter what you get. It Honestly, try your best. If not, literally don't panic yourself about it. Uh, but again, like I said, we will be doing the first five practice sessions, and then we'll just be doing the quick practice session mode um, from the third race, or the third practice session in Australia. So I think one of these for me here was do not go off the track. I don't know if it counted or not. So as you can see there, it's telling you that with the race strategy program, we've got five laps in which to do it in. The targets, the stars, basically... Uh, as you can see, so on the right, I've got my speed trap. I'm first, so I've already got that one. So there's a lot going on in the practice sessions on here. It'll also say there on the left, I don't know if where you were looking, but on the right, at the end of the first corner, speed trap. And that's the only time that you can see the speed trap, by the way, very annoyingly. On the left then, after each section, it'll tell you uh, what you've got. So there it is, developmental boost. DRS zones, I've got a clean sector. So that's ticked off, manage tire wear. I don't get that because I'm pretty crappy. Um, but yeah, so if you want the resource points to do the, uh, for doing this one, I do highly advise doing the three, uh, three laps here until you get, you see the targets there on the right hand side, until you get 50. So once you do have 50, and of course you do have to beat the target time as well, so just be aware of that. But once that is done and you've got 50, we can just go ahead and go into, back into our garage, that's fine. So... Return, returneth to your Gareth. I mean, garage. Now, and then what you can do is pretty much just scroll over to the top time. Of course, what you need to do as well, sorry, another achievement I forgot we're getting as well. You can press the X button a couple of times here to accelerate time in the bottom right hand corner. What we are doing, we need to get, uh, we need to get the top three practice times, qualify on pole and win the race as well for the I want it all achievement. It's another achievement i do apologize that i almost forgot um so that's why it is doubly important there that we get top of practice if you didn't manage to get uh practice uh, the quickest time in practice um just restart the session and just uh, go again it should be fine though honestly should absolutely be fine should be nice and easy 
So once we advance, we are going into practice two. Again, if you want to have a look at your messages, again, when you're in practice, you can also have a look at the R&D. If you've got something to spend, you can actually go ahead and put them in. So you don't actually have to wait until the weekend's over. So we can, as you can see, my morale right here is low for aerodynamics and chassis. So if you see that something is low, just go ahead and start upgrading in your low uh, departments. So whatever's low, just pop it in. As you can see, my powertrain and durability, both of them are high. Or if you just want to, you can just recommend the upgrade and go from there. But I do advise not uh, not keeping the morale too low. So what I would do here is normally, instead of messing around there, I should have put one in chassis and one in aerodynamics. But again, it's fine if you don't. It's not like they're going to quit working or anything. So don't worry about that one. Um... So again, if you want to just have a little look, see, I've got 400 resource points left. So I was just having a look, seeing if there was any more. You can see what R&D is in progress as well. Uh, but since we're all done here, we can now go to the next practice session. And during the next practice, now this time you'll have to choose go to track. We are going to go to quick practice later on. This is after we get the pure power achievement. Uh, but for now, we are going to go to track. Because uh, basically, quick practice, if you go to track, obviously, we're going to track. Quick practice is just a, basically a simulation. So that is good. Now, press the X button here to go, of course, into session info. This time, we're going to choose tire management. So make sure to choose the middle one, which is tire management, of course. Uh, we've obviously already done race strategy, so we don't need to do that. Uh, but tire management, of course, it'll have a no whole couple of other new things to do. Developmental boost and resource awards. Low tie wear, average tie wear, as you can see. And then for the rest, you can just crack on. Now, again, highly, we'll just um, stick with the flying lap, but it is highly important here to make sure to just blast it all the way to the first corner so that you see that you are first on the speed trap. As you can see, I've blasted it. And, oh no, in fact, <laughs> that's the last corner. I'll just see that again. So I actually just cracked on with it. Uh, again, I'm in the Delta, so I've beaten the time. That's all good. Just keep spamming it then. Keep going until you get all the way to the bottom. And on the right there, you see the speed trap. That is us in first place. Job done. So as long as you're in first place for that, we can actually now just return to the garage. Again, try what you can do with the practice sessions um, and the um, uh, <laughs> practice programs. That's what I'm trying to say. That's the point. Otherwise, we are going to advance. Crofty, why do you keep calling me Wang? I'm not your Wang. I am your lover. Nah, actually, screw that. Right, so... And again, obviously, mate, you would have made sure that you were first in second practice. Right, again, have a look at the um, R&D if you want. If you've got any uh, resource points to spend, of course, do it again. If not, we can just crack on with practice three. Uh, I don't think there's anything for 400, so that's unlucky. Uh, obviously, it does get a little bit quicker um, after we don't have to do the, the practice sessions and everything. It does obviously get a little bit quicker <laughs> a little bit later on. So let us go to practice three. And of course, you're going to be doing the same thing. So we're going to go to track. We are going to please wait. We're going to F1 and then please wait. And then session info again. This time we're going to choose the qualifying pace one. Um, so I've got managed to get four or five in both of them so far. Let's see if we missed a consistent go for four or five in qualifying pace. Um, now again, even if you only get two or even three, even one, it does not matter. Um, obviously, it'd be better so you can get more resource points and a bit more of a developmental boost. But don't panic if you only get, you know, one or two or anything like that. Uh, so let us crack on now. It's the qualifying pace, so we're just doing one big qualifying run this time for this practice program. And of course, make sure when we get to turn one, make sure that you should be. Anyway, make sure that you're blasting it so you get first in the speed trap. So there we go. This is the program starting. And then there we go, speed trap again. So that should already be three out of five then for the pure power achievement. And of course, make sure that you are first in this third practice session as well. 
That'll be three out of five then for the I Want It All achievement for topping three practice sessions, topping qualifying and winning the race. So here we go then. Right at the end, old cucumber batch. Benadryl cucumber batch. And you know what I'm like? I did try to put in cheesy mature words, uh, <laughs> immature words, what I should call them. Uh, the old swears, but I even put bum. And uh, EA was like, nah, nah, I don't like that. Mwah. So once we have accelerated the time enough and you've returned to the garage, accelerated time, topped the practice session again. Benadryl cucumber batch. Oh, yes, we are flying. Now it is time for qualifying. Now, as you can see, we also get a lot of resource points from here as well. Um, and the team acclaim. Now for team acclaim, we need to get to level 20 overall. We start off on level one. Oscar starts on level six. Of course, we'll catch up a lot quicker and level 20 should be no problem. But that's just like the, the XP screen, if you wish. So after every race, if you win, if you do all the good stuff, you just get a lot more points. It's pretty shamper, man. Right, so it's time for qualifying. Nothing else, nothing else to say this time. Again, have a look at the R and D if you so wish. If not, we can just go to qualifying. Again, make sure that you qualify on pole. It's only vitally important this time because we want the achievement. Otherwise, you could just um, retire from uh, from the second race onwards. But we're just going to go for it. So. Once you have qualified and you've qualified on pole, we will now go for the race. Again, nothing else to do. There he is, the Wiener Confidence legend of BCU, Benedict Benadryl Cucumber Batch. Um, Verstappen, Sainz, Sir Lewis Hamilton, Lando Norris, Oscar Pastry. There he is. Mm, Oscar, Oscar Gregg's Pastry. Lovely. Right, so... Um, I mean, there's pretty much nothing else to do in this one apart from just win, pretty much. Um, so, yeah. It's go! It's lights out and away we go! I do miss the Murray Walker. It's go! 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 And all of his mistakes. They were cute. Crofty's mistakes are just bloody irritating. Um, so, yeah, that's all you got to do for this one anyway. Um, in terms of each race, it doesn't matter. Now, of course, like I said... With the Constructors... Whoopsie daisy. Well, I wasn't paying attention there. With the Constructors Championship on the line, of course, later on we will need to be taken out. That's why we'll have a look at the Constructors standings after each race. If Ferrari, Mercedes or Red Bull are either ahead or getting close to you, what you can do is just take them out or, you know, just hold them up so they're out of the points. You go on to win. Again, like I said, very easy, so you should have no problems just going ahead and winning. Um, but always check the constructor standings at the end. So as you can see, we're already two points behind Red Bull. So in the next race in Australia, I take Max out. Um, so that puts us right in the lead. You're going to have to do that a couple of times uh, if you've got Oscar Piastri or any of the others as a teammate. So once you've won that, um, you, we will get another achievement here, of course. I want it all. And I want it near. I want it near. Damage deductions, none fit, mate. How good of a driver am I? Apart from I just sold my car, which had a lot of dents in it. But anyway, apart from that, that was somebody else's fault, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right so here we are then, back at the main screen. We've just won our first race. Of course, always go to these personnel department events. Um, now, with this one, with these ones being our sort of main career... Mm, a lot of the time, I don't think the answers matter. Sometimes you get, like, more team acclaim and less money or vice versa. For this one, you can either put Piastri's pace or his awareness up. It doesn't matter. You've chosen something that will count towards the um, achievement for doing 25 of these things. We need you to hurry up, Oscar. Why have you got to practice to go faster? Can't you just be fast? I mean, if it was that easy, then we could all do it. So there we go. So we're going to have a look at our vehicles. It's only been one race weekend, so everything should still be in the green and still be good to go. Remember, we're going to be doing this at the after the end of every race weekend. Uh, in terms of corporate, contracts are good. We don't have to worry about that for now. Uh, but we'll just skip over to contracts. Press Y to go into driver perks. And then see if you can put the point uh, power map in upgrade on. If you can, then it's all good. We can purchase the perk and everything else should still be going. Job done. 
Right, next up then we're going to go once again to R&D, see how many resource points that you've got. Again, like I said, whatever's low, try to um, go with them more. So whoever's low, whatever department's low, try to prioritize them more. If not, for now, you can literally just keep pressing the X button to recommend an upgrade and just keep going from there. Um, now, also, I'm not going to be showing it this part every single time. I'll show it for the first two or three race weekends just so that you get into a good, a good bit of routine and a good bit of order with it, but I won't show it after every race weekend. Um, but as I said, R&D departments, if the morale's low, try to prioritize them. If not, you can just press the X button to recommend the upgrade and that'll be another upgrade. But remember, you need to get an upgrade in at least each department and 15 in single uh, in a single one. Then we can go to activities. And again, remember to whatever has the second driver statistics, prioritize that first because that will count towards uh, boosting a teammate stat 10 times. So again, you need to go into the activity timeline, go to whatever your second driver statistics are. Then on the next one, do some department morale. And that's the way, that's the order and the way that we'll always do it. Second driver statistics first, then department morale, and then acclaim and resources. Obviously, the greener, the better. So if there's more green, just go for that one, of course. Green is good, man. Green is good. So next up, then you can just go acclaim and resources. Obviously, if there's more green, as I just said, try and go for the green. If there is, you know, one or two reds, it doesn't really make it too much of a difference in all fairness. Everything balances out eventually anyway. Um... But again, that is the order. So even if you're sort of getting confused and you just want to write a list of the order down, because again, I think after the second or third race weekend, I'm not going to show it anymore. We're going to corporate, then driver perks. Then we're going to go to vehicle to make sure that any of our parts uh, are not needing replacing. Then R&D to put our resource points into whatever. And then facilities, again, try and keep those departments as even as possible. And then you're going to do activities. And it's very important to do them to get a good couple of achievements. So again, if you want to write that down so you know exactly what you're doing, then, you know, be my guest. But if you can remember and you sort of, you're already starting to get a use, used to it and it's a bit of a routine, then that's even better. Right, with these Pirelli hot laps, we're not even going to bother. We're just going to skip and advance every time. It's just not worth the... It's just not worth the money in the team acclaim. If it was 100,000 resource points, we'd go and do it. But it's not. It's it's not worth your time at all. So we're just going to go to the race weekend. And here we are then in your Australia. I've always wanted to visit bloody Australia. Fit as, mate. Because I love Australia. Yeah, I do. My accent needs some uh, improving. But uh, anyway. So remember, we are going to be doing these final two practice sessions. Basically in full. In order to get the pure power achievement. And again... Can't remember that is for achieving first in the speed trap in five practice sessions. So go to track, continue career, go to track. And obviously what we're going to be doing then is pressing the X button once more. And then we can go to race strategy type man. You don't have to do it in that particular order. You can do it in whatever order you want. Um, and actually doing it in order from left to right actually messed me up for the pure power achievement. And I'll explain why in just a little bit. So once you do the whole race, uh, I, again, I just go from left to right, just out of ease. I do love this Australian track, though. God, I absolutely love Albert Park. And it should always be first on the track, on the calendar, sorry. I don't know about you guys, but if Australia is first on the calendar, that's when I know that Formula One's really started. The Bahrain and Saudi Arabia... I don't, I don't like them as opening tracks. Albert Park's the boy. Uh, right, so once we begin, of course, the speed trap here is at the very end of the corner. So the first corner, there it is. So I'm first, so I know I've got that one good. Already messed up my sector, which is fine. <laughs> but it's, so again, just like in Bahrain then, you're just going to do three laps until we get the target there to uh, 50, and it's a good purple star. Again, that's mainly just for resource points. Go so cucumber batch and ock on, ock on. Now why don't you ock off? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. That was just a joke, of course. Right, so once you have done that, we can just go ahead and accelerate time and then head to the second practice session. Now make sure that you're blasting it down here. Make sure you're blasting it all the way to the first corner so that you see you are first in the speed trap. Now. 
Me, very stupidly, because I was doing time management stuff, I slowed right down. I only got second. Um, but I did get first right here, but the achievement does didn't unlock. So I don't know if it sort of bugged out or whatever. So if this happens to you as well, and you get second first, and then first, restart the session and try it again. Then we can retire from the session, and then hopefully the pure power achievement should unlock for you. Like I said, it bugged out for me somehow. I don't know why, so I get it a little bit later on. But again, just make sure that you've blasted it down to that first corner, and you are first in the speed trap, and then... Yeah, it's golden nuggets, man! Anyway... So, with practice three, we can now, in fact, as long as you've got the pure power achievement, we're good. We are literally good. Uh, if you've got some resource points, try and find one that will, uh, where you can, apparently the morale's high now. I'm a good boss, see? This time, though, we are going to go to quick practice. This is a pretty much unmissable achievement, really. Um, but what you can do, when you select it, of course, we're not going to be going out on track, but you can pick whatever one you want. So, we haven't done qualifying pace yet, so we'll go for qualifying pace. What you can do then is press the A button. Uh, you can read that, but I'll tell you what to do. So, from left to right, you'll always have 100% success, 50%, 25%. They'll obviously have different things, so it depends what you want. If you want more resource points, obviously go for that one. The two in the middle here has a 50% chance of success, 50% chance of failure. So you just press the A, the A button. It tells you a time at the top, how long it's going to take. That will obviously take off the time from the session. As you can see, that goes down, so we've only got 21, um, 21 minutes now. Just out of ease, because again, I know that you can think like, oh, what shall I do, what shall I go with? But to be honest, I end, I, for the most of the part, I ended up just going from left to right constantly. So I always ended up going 100% or 70% and just going from basically left to right. Sometimes it fails, sometimes it works. Doesn't make a difference, really. Um, obviously, it's just a case of a bit more developmental boosts and resource points if you got insufficient time press the b button twice that'll go back to this screen and you can end the session and that is uh, yeah so that's why we are going to start getting through this team career a little bit quicker so once we've done that then we will get the get it done achievement and that's all we're going to be choosing from now on we're just going to be choosing the quick practice from now on um unless of course it's completely up to you if you want to actually go and try and get five out of five on the track. Completely up to you. Of course. Right. Always check R&D. Again, there may be some RP that you just earned that we can now spend. Um, if not, we can just go ahead, go to qualifying. I did end up... Now, I always end up, just for the resource points again, I ended up qualifying on pole. And here I am, because Red Bull are in front of us in the Constructors' Championship, here I am making Max Verstappen's life a living hell. Luckily, <laughs> the race directors weren't on board today. Um, it did, it, it did spin me around, but look, honestly, even if you get spun around on the first lap for, and you end up last or almost last, hi Seb. Um, honestly, you you literally get five laps, of course, so it is easy to just smash back. Just got past old uh, Sir Bronte of Hamilton, and we're going to go for the winner. The the overtake on the old Carlos of signs. Old signs means beans. There he is. There's the winning overtake. Fantastic. So yeah, like I said, if you're going to try and take out one of your competitors, try and do it on the first or even second lap because um, you do have a good number of laps there to catch up, overtake and win the race. If you do end up spinning out on, say, lap three or four and you end up uh, on the back of the grid, it's probably worth just... Uh, restarting the session. Of course, the only reason that we need to win every time is we need to win the Drivers and Constructors Championship. Uh, so there we go. Have a look. Now Red Bull have dropped from first to fourth, and that's all good. So now we're going to be keeping our eye on Ferrari. I'm not saying in every race completely take out your competitors, but if they are getting a bit too close for comfort, take them out on the first or second lap, and catch up with the rest of the pack, win, job done. We, that's, uh, that's pretty much... We are dirty, filthy tactics. But I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, on to round three. So, now that we've got a bit of... Um, a bit of a routine, a bit of... Everything's going well. You sort of know what to do now, hopefully. Again, remember to look at your vehicle. If any need, parts need changing, have a look at your R&D. R &D. 
And of course, press the X button to recommend an upgrade. Or if you want, just if, if one is lacking, aerodynamics is lacking for me. So I just put one or two more into the aerodynamics upgrade. Um, just do whatever it is that you're doing. And then, of course, make sure to fill up the uh, activities table. That's important, of course. That is important for achievements and to get more money and everything. Um, now, again, like I said, this is the last time that I'm going to be showing you this. So otherwise, I'm literally just going to... Because it for, for basically, from now on, the race weekends here, they, they're becoming straightforward, pretty standard. We know what to do now in terms of practice, quick practice, qualify on pole, take out your competitor, whoever it is, one Ferrari, one Mercedes driver, Red Bull, win the race. That's that's pretty much it now. So we're starting to get a bit of a a bit of a routine going, aren't we? Aren't we, my boys? Oh yeah. So this is just me having a little uh, look around. Again, if you feel like you haven't made an upgrade in one of the departments, it's probably worth going for that upgrade now. Uh, purely just to get that achievement out of the way for putting an upgrade in each department. Um, or oh, apparently I'm just messing around like a hell of a lot here. Um, uh, again, obviously go to overview and activities. Make sure, again, as I said, as I said time and time again, make sure second drive statistics, then department morale, then acclaim and resources. Um, otherwise, as I said, facilities... You need literally like 6, 8, 10, 12 million, so we don't have that. So that's why we're not really going to be looking at facilities until the more or less the end of the season, effectively. Um, but with corporate, again, and the driver perks, you don't even need to worry about those for now either. So I'll say it one more time, and then hopefully that's implanted in your brain. Hopefully my beautiful Welsh voice is implanted in your brain. Every time we're on a race weekend, make sure to check the vehicle if your vehicle needs something, you can just skip over to number two, and that will upgrade that free of charge, no penalties. Then R&D, put your resource points into R&D in all four departments as evenly as possible. Then overview, activities. Um, again, make sure second driver there uh, is, takes priority, then department, then acclaim. Then we should be pretty much good to go. So um, basically now that's all we're going to be doing between... Round three here and round five. Okay, we've had the new parts come through the fabrication process. We'll have them with us for the next Grand Prix. An upcoming news article has a question they'd like your input on. Oof, that's a big L there for Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc. Who's our rival? Sergio Perez or Carlos Sainz? Now, it doesn't matter who you choose here to be a rival, but basically, if you beat them over a weekend... Your third sponsor will then give you some more money for beating your rival. That's pretty pretty standard, pretty squared away. Our new parts have completed without issue. They'll be on the car ready for the next race weekend. As we start round three then remember we're going to do quick practice hopefully you know how to do that by now um and then we're going to one shot quality take pole we're going to win the canadian grand prix and then we're going to end up back here with team acclaim already we're on team acclaim 18 we get a whole bunch of money there as well um now again it's because i've explained literally the majority of things it's not worth me taking you through all of the practice or the qualities or the races you know what to do by now I mean, the guides are over two hours, so you should know what to do. Now, this, make sure, if you're going to ask the driver's questionnaire here, make sure to accept it. This pops up randomly. Um, you'll only get two questions. It don't matter how you answer, but you make you need to make sure that you do accept it. This is a random, you may not even get it throughout the entirety of, the, uh, of your career. So it's just a case of having to keep going and keep going until this... Uh, as the driver's meeting pops up. So once it does pop up, you will get the executive driver achievement. There it is. The, oh, the executive decision, sorry. So that's really the only important one that we have to make sure then. So if you see one of those pop up, 
Make sure to accept it, act, answer the questions however you wish, and that's job done. But as I said, it is very random, so don't panic about that. Uh, now, I didn't show Canada because I didn't need to, but I am showing you how to get rid of your one of your rivals if needed. So here we are then in round four. We're just going to take out George Russell. Sorry, mate, I thought that was the break. That was the accelerator, sorry, my bad. So big Oscar, I tried taking out Lewis as well, but uh, ah, the selfish son of a gun wouldn't go for it. Uh, but yeah, so that's the only reason why I didn't show Canada um, and only that bit there. I just took out George, which means less constructors points for Mercedes, which means more for us. Job done. And of course, as I said, each weekend now becomes a little bit uh, more uh, just straightforward and easy. Quick practice, qualifying, race win. As you can see then, my internal combustion engine is a little bit yellow, so we are going to go over to number two, press the A button, and then press the A button again to uh, accept it and OK, and that gives us a new one without no penalty. You shouldn't ever have a penalty, to be honest, for any of these, but obviously after every race, just keep checking each one. Now we go to Australia in round five again, practice, qualify on pole, and then what we're going to do um, I believe that is Ferrari, who are now my closest challengers. So, that's what we're going to do. Oh, gee. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Okay, this is not what I had in mind. Oh, my God. Okay, so, by the way, I love this livery. It reminds me of the 1990s Jordan. You know, the 96, 97 Jordan. Beautiful. Right, so, I've just made my uh, life a lot... Uh, excuse me, go goateefy. Get the hell out of my teeth, you big beef. Here we go then. Lap three out of three. Takes over Verstappen. Incredible. He's going for the win on George Russell. Ah! Oh, can he do it? He's got the ERS. Screw you, George Russell. Screw you, crikey boy. Yes! Nice. It's very nice. Ah, oh, George Russell just crikeyed himself to absolute death there with that. Crikey, crikey, he won. Crikey, crikey. Because George Russell is the most poshest sounding crikey lad. The, the only one who could do a crikey proper is Steve Irwin, really, isn't he? Uh, but anyway, uh, this is Austria round five. Again, I'm trying to just... Yeah, you can bag her off, mate. George, old George Crikey Russell. Well, I am actually trying to take out... This is why I've just show, shown you these here. Uh, it doesn't always work, of course. Sometimes it does. Obviously, if it doesn't work out in your favour... As it, uh, eh, yeah, kind of did for me. There you go. Just sh sh shove Carlos signs over to the, to the uh, gravel pit as much as you can. Again, if you end up getting spun out or anything, obviously just use your flashback and go mad from there. Uh, we're going to take out George Russell here as well. Sorry, sorry, crikey. Uh, my, my apologies, kid. So we don't mind Red Bull because they are, you know, not as bad. Um... Uh, down the constructors table again obviously as i said about 16 billion times make sure to have a look at your vehicles apply any new components that you need go to r d again if you don't have the achievement for um developing a component in every r d apartment try and remember which one you've done and just get one from there uh, again, also, sometimes with the R&D, you will get a couple of failed upgrades as well. So if that happens, you'll just have to get more resource points and put your points back into that, and then it should normally succeed the second time. Have a look at your contract perks as well. Uh, you should have enough definitely by now, definitely by the fifth round for at least two to get onto the second one. Um, and I believe this is where I'm going to be getting the all-rounder achievement. Or eventually, anyway. Uh, and again, the all-rounder is just for developing a component in every R&D department. So, yeah. So, uh, different parts will fail, um, but it'll all be random. So, I only got, I think, two or three failed parts throughout my entire career. So, it's not too bad. So, hopefully, you'll be pretty much the same there. Um, once you have done, we can go, uh, obviously, to the activity tab as well. Obviously, hopefully, you've been doing that in the same order as I said. So, Second driver statistics, then department, then acclaim and resources. But pretty much roughly around sort of round six and round seven, um, we will have a very good lead in the driver's championship, hopefully the constructor's championship too. But pretty much soon we will get the boosted achievement for boosting our second driver's stats 10 times in 
team activities. Don't think it's going to be this one. I do believe it's going to be the next one. Um, but there is an achievement coming up here, which I do do. Yeah, do do. And the do do means do do. Do 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 and just upgrade in uh, whatever parts the game tells you. So you can either fire someone, or you could, or you can apologize. Or so you basically said that uh, my ass was fat, and uh, that's I don't take that lightly. This is a good squatter's bum. This this is not uh, it's not a fat ass. It's a squatter's ass. Right. So what we're gonna see is sponsorship renewal. <laughs> So it, handle that bit, whatever you want, if it does come up. Now, you can either renew your sponsors or manage your sponsors. Uh, managing, you can just basically pick new sponsors. But if you've got the money, it's pretty much easier, efficient, and quicker to just renew the sponsors instead of wasting time trying to look for new ones. Um, so before we begin the next round, then again, just make sure that everything's squared away in terms of your vehicle. If you do need to apply new components, of course, that's what I always ended up doing. Uh, just switching between one and two, two and three. If it changed color ever so slightly, I ended up just applying a new uh, component. And then I believe this is where we're going to get the boosted achievement as well. So obviously, as I said, as long as you be doing the second driver statistics pretty much first, it's pretty much just to get them out of the way. Um, and we're all done. What we can do is advance the time, and I do believe that. Ta-da! There it is. Boosted. So, boosted your second driver's stats 10 times. Now, just for the sake of the career, and that he still does help you out in the remaining couple of races, I do advise just to continue uh, with those active second driver's activities. Um, otherwise, we can now head on to round seven, which is Italy. Now, the reason I've left this one in is because we are going to take the victory. You have to take the victory if you haven't, you know, if you've been a bit blasé about it so far, you haven't cared much. We definitely need to take the victory because you will get the Ferrari fan achievement. And remember, we've got the Ferrari powertrain in the back of our car. So this will give us the Ferrari fan achievement. And this is where I actually managed to unlock the world championship as well. So again, you may be able to do it. Um, if not, you'll probably unlock the driver's championship achievement in the next uh, in the next round, driver of the day there, Zhou Guan Yu, or as Crofty calls him, Joe. All right, Joe. Eh? Hello, Joe. Zhou Guan Yu. Um, but yes, so there we go. I have won the driver's championship. Uh, we got the Ferrari fan achievement for winning a race at Monza with a Ferrari engine. We also should get. The You Know Our Name achievement for reaching team acclaim of level 20. Um, that's if you chose one of these uh, smaller drivers there, these smaller contracted drivers. If you chose the Schumacher, Prost, Senna, whatever, you would have probably got the You Know Our Name achievement a little bit earlier on. Um, but as we smash through all here, again, obviously just make sure, have a check at your constructor standings as well. Uh, I've been taking enough of these guys off that we should be pretty much unassailable now, but... Let's take a little look. Constructors, yeah, pretty much. But it's always worth uh, just taking them out race by race because it's always fun as well. And it's a bit of a challenge as well, isn't it? If you get punted off with one of the other guys, easy. Right, ultimate prize, that achievement, the F1 Drivers Championship should unlock now. And as I said, you know our name, that achievement should unlock as well. So you should get quite a few there by round eight. So once this one is done, there is going to be some regulation changes as well. Oh, sorry, we're going on to round eight now. Now, what will happen is either here or actually during a weekend, uh, and again, just renew the sponsor. It's just easier to do that. Um, you will get a email saying that there's going to be a couple of regulation changes. Now, it's easy to miss, but 
basically, uh, if you end up missing the email, that's fine. Basically, what you're going to do in your workstation on your R&D performance tab, the impacted departments for the next year will show an exclamation mark instead of the normal icon. Um, and it'll basically say that regulation changes are happening. So at the minute, we're all good. So you can still continue to put anything in. It's all random as well. So two departments will be affected. It's random, whichever one it is. So for now, that's why I say just carry on with the recommended upgrades rather than trying to put all your eggs in one basket. Because if you're going for the achievement for putting 15, um, part, 15 upgrades in one department, that is the, the department that may be affected. So that's why I'm saying for now, go for the recommended upgrade. And as soon as we get to about round nine, we will definitely know which will be affected. And then we don't, we won't put any upgrades in there. We just stick with, we, then we can begin to put our eggs in one tiny little chicken bun. Right, now we can choose either Lewis or George. And as much as I respect Lewis Hamilton, um, seven years of Lewis Hamilton championships just done my absolute tip bags in. So it's George Russell. Old crikey boy, here he is. Oh, he's racing fast. Oh, crikey. That's a Will Buxton classic as well. If you race fast, you will go fast. Thank you, Will, for that bit of fantastic advice once again. So, we've got the championship all sewed up now. Um, again, if you want to still do activities, obviously, definitely worth doing, so Oscar can help out just a little bit more, but we are going to be coming up to the end now, uh, start the season break, and then we can just... Now, again, if you want to, here, if you again, if you still got the resource points, head into R&D, do all the stuff you've been doing so far, crack on with a couple of activities and smash those out. And here I actually get my second um, Ask the Drivers. So hopefully you've got at least one by now. So again, even if you've done it the first time, accept it again and, and answer the questions. Like I said, this is a very random one. I don't know what pops it up. The, what you can do, because we uh, basically when we finish all of the, the achievements and the only achievement that we've got left in my team is for completing 25 of these... Um, um, department development marketing things, um, we're basically going to just start a new career and make it so more will appear. Um, but that's pretty much the only option that we've got. So hopefully one of those have appeared and you get the, you already have the executive decision achievement. As always, skip in advance. We're not going to bother with that. We're just going to go straight to Brahil. Um, a couple of retirements. Valtteri Bottas is retiring. Well, 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 I did not expect that. Um, obviously, you know, if you want to spend some of your money as well, you're more than welcome to do that. I literally didn't bother at all throughout this entirety of the um, of this first career. I literally didn't bother. Because uh, we do need some money to give to Oscar, Oscar Piastri to renew his contract. If you don't have enough money, um, you can get another driver, but it'll sort of basically um, upset the balance, as it were. So... Always have a bit of money. After this race anyway, this is where I get the Constructors Achievement actually. So after the Brazilian Grand Prix, round nine, um, that is how where I got the Constructors Championship. You may get it a little bit earlier. You may get it in this 10th round. But basically, uh, as long as you have a points lead of 45 or more after round nine, which I did, of course, um, that's how we get that achievement. So as you can see here, the chassis and durability department for me are the ones that are being completely wiped out for next year. So what you need to do, or what I would need to do then, and now I'm just putting all my eggs, as I said, into one basket, and it's going to be all into aerodynamics. Um, so for whichever two it is for you, that's it's, obviously don't be putting any more upgrades into the affected departments there. As you can see, the obvious answer, if you missed the email, is it's got two big exclamation marks and a big warning saying, uh, don't upgrade here. We're being screwed up, man. But I end up just sticking with the aerodynamic ones anyway. Um, so, this is pretty much it now. So after you do Abu Dhabi, and we have won that, that's the career finish, but we do still have a couple of achievements left to get. And that one is 
for completing 15 upgrades in a single R&D department. Plus the one for completing 25 department events in my team. So if you've got the executive decision for completing the Ask the Driver department event, you'll only have the Crisis Management achievement and the Tunnel Vision achievement left. So uh, what we can do is literally just keep cracking on with it for now. Um, as we begin Season 2, we can renew Oscar Piastri's contract, uh, as long as you got the money, of course, if you didn't spend any, and we can just keep putting all our upgrades into whatever it is that you want. 14 for me. Now, I do end up... I had to... It seemed to me that I think I got to about 17 or 18 before the achievement unlocked. So just be aware of that one. Sometimes it may take a couple more. Uh, but we're going to be just... We, so literally at the minute, all we're just going to keep doing is advancing time until um, we can try and just get some R&D upgrades. So as I said, providing you haven't spent much, you can now renegotiate re with Oscar Piastri, or you can go to the driver market. As you can see, his value has shot up by a couple of mil. A cool three mil he's worth now. So, um, it's obviously always worth just going for the low risk one. Make an offer. You've got plenty of money, so it's not worth going for the high risk offer. So, just go low risk. Oscar or anyone, whoever you've got, will more than likely accept. And then that's pretty much good to go. Thank you, Oscar, Oscar, for that incredible pose. We can advance time, end the season, and then we can begin season two to get the final two achievements in my team. Okay, we've had the new part. Ta da! It's all done. End of season be done. So, when we're going to finish the season now, it's basically going to ask us if we, because of course we're world champion. World champion, baby! Yeah! Nice! It's very nice. Uh, but it's going to ask us if we want to be number one or continue our number. Of course, uh, you only get to be number one once. Unless you call your going for a wee number ones, then you go number one a lot of times. Um, obviously it goes through all of this stuff and then basically what's going to happen, we're just going to start season two again and you may once again have to uh, again, uh, we're going to stick with ten races no, don't change anything here, that's all good as long as you've got the pure power achievement from earlier on as well again, you can choose and pick anything you want but we are going to just uh, advance um, but you may have to just crack on with a couple of races. This time, though, we can actually just simulate the races. So rather than actually go through another five laps and another ten laps and another couple of practice sessions. So what we're going to do then, whatever resource points that you will currently have. Again, we don't need to worry and focus about anything else now. Only the R&D final achievement here. Excuse me. Um... Oh, in fact, there we go then. I got it. Tunnel vision. So that one unlocked lovely just before Australia. So as I said, if you don't have it yet, don't worry about it. That's honestly absolutely fine. Um, just keep getting your resource points. Keep going into your specific department. Of course, for me, it was aerodynamics. And after that's done and we've got that achievement, we can actually go and just quit to the main menu. Now, I did have to do the Bahrain Grand Prix first, just in case you didn't notice. Um, there we go. So you can have a look, see how much percentage you're on. So it, it's not going to be too long before we get it. But I did have to do the Bahrain Grand Prix. Now, what you can do, um, you can do the first practice session, and then you can just go ahead, go to race, and then press the X button to just skip and simulate it. 
and obviously you'll just get a loading screen and that's all good. So instead of having to drive the, the event again, do practice one, then you'll be able to simulate and skip to the race by pressing the X button and then you can just come straight out of here and job done. If you do need more resource points though, obviously it's probably worth doing the um, at least the quick practice sessions just to get a couple more for the tunnel vision achievement. But hopefully you've got that one now. We're all good. Now what we're going to do, we are going to go back and do one. Well, we're just going to quit to the main menu here. So our basically our main career is now finished. So what we're going to do is go to career again. And we are going to go to my team. We're just going to do one more thing. And of course, that is for doing 25 department events. So single player career. Bo, 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 go to create new. Now, make sure to choose my team. Choose newcomer. And then custom season. And then again, what you're going to do is go to 10 races. You're going to leave the races as they are. You don't need to change anything. That's good. Customize your settings. And there's only one that we're going to do this time. So, um, oh, by the way, press the Y button to go. You see in the top right-hand corner, the race style? Press the Y button to put it to expert. This is important just to get this quickly done a little bit quicker. Um, then we can go to career settings. Now, put department event frequency to increased the department frequency increased, then facility management and R&D management both off, automate, automated. So facility and R&D management both off, automated, and then we can just absolutely crack on with it. So we're almost done. We're almost through my team. My team seemed to take absolutely pissing bloody ages, by the way. Um, with this one, we can just go ahead and do the normal stuff. So we can go first things first. Uh, team icons, create our team, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to bother this time around. But we are going to bother with the team details, because we have to anyway. So, team name, you can do whatever you want. I think this is the part where I just put... Um, oh, no, sorry. No, that's a little bit later on. I put... Borsazg. <laughs> that's a great... That's a great Formula 1 team name. Right, just choose the first one here, which should be Genon Dynamics. Then you're going to choose the Renault E-Tech for the power unit supplier. And for your teammate, you can literally choose any driver. So you can choose absolutely anyone you want. One of the big boys, one of the small boys, Theo Porsche right there was just the first one. So I just chose that, Broski. And of course, we can go through the whole this whole crap again. Advance, advance, advance. And of course, you have to go with... Uh, well, let's see, hang on. We have to do another questionnaire here with Will... Wow, is that a steering wheel in a Formula One car? Buxton. Now, what you're going to see is we're going to get a lot more department events. Um, because, of course, we increase the frequency. We're going to get a few more even before the first race. Again, you may have to go ahead and simulate um, one or two races. Basically, just keep going now until we get that final achievement. Um, I think it does. I think I do end it. I think, in fact, I did have to end up doing the... Uh, Bahrain Grand Prix. So again, remember, if you have to do Bahrain, that's fine. Just uh, retire out of the first practice session or do the, the quick one and then just simulate the race by pressing the X button on race and just keep on going until the achievement should unlock and it should unlock quite quickly for me. Now, like I said, you should have at least 50, but around 60% by the first time you do that. And then crisis management is all done. And that is fantastic. So, did everyone have fun doing single player? Good, because we've got a lot of multiplayer left, uh, which is the people's favorite, right? Now, uh, I'm not going to be showing you any achievements unlocking, but I will explain to you exactly what we are going to do. So, we've got two achievements here tied to uh, two player, either co-op or against. So, what we, there are two achievements. Um... And it is for earning first and second place in a single race as players in two-player career and completing our completing your first race weekend in two-player career. Now, the two-player career is basically the same as my team's. Um, as you can see, so the single player, my team, you can do the same then with the two-player career. So you need to change all the assists and everything. 
But there is a particular way that you can do it. If you don't have a friend, it's a bit of a stretch, but you can do it this way. So if you own a digital copy of F122 and you've got a second console um, and a second controller and a second dummy game tag, you can unlock these by ta basically taking advantage of the fact that open while you uh, press pause on multiplayer, the AI driver takes over. So your car continues to go and it's even, it is actually evenly matched with the other AI drivers as long as you put it down to zero. So like I said, if you do go down this option, uh, put your dummy to be signed in on your home console and then make sure that your other dummy account is driving for either Ferrari or Red Bull. And then what we're going to do, obviously if you've got two Xboxes, two TVs, two controllers and you're all good to go, practice one, both retire. Um, you yourself, your achievement, uh, qualify on pole. Pause your dummy, uh, basically pause your dummy immediately as you start qualifying. The AI driver should then get to around sixth. And then with the race then, what you can do at the race start, pause your dummy immediately, your dummy account, drive yourself for around a lap and to get at least a five second lead. Then pause yourself, swap to the dummy controller, get your dummy into second place, um, caught up around you, your main account, or a little bit ahead. Then pause the dummy again, swap back to yourself, and just keep going like that. So, like I said, on multiplayer, every time that you pause, the AI takes over. Uh, but that is another way. If you don't have a friend, but you do somehow have two Xboxes, two controllers, and another dummy account, that is a way to do that. So, again, pause in your dummy account, you qualify poll, you do a lap, get a five-second lead, pause yourself, swap around, job done. But, of course, if you do have someone that you can play with, what you're going to do, you're going to go to contract or co-op, doesn't matter which one it is, go to full season. Um, what we're going to do then, we're going to customize the settings. So go ahead, customize your settings, and you're going to do this for both, okay? So both you and your pal. Um, go to assist restrictions. So just go ahead, go to assist restrictions. Eventually, we took, took a while in, didn't I? So, steering assist on, braking assist high, anti-lock brakes on, traction control, dynamic racing line, both on full, gearbox automatic, pit assist on, pit release assist on, ERS assist, and DRS assist on. So the ers and ers, make sure those ers and ers assist are on. Um, but the your personal ones, so uh, the assist options... Here are for how you've liked it through the game, so that's why I'm not showing you the assists. Go to weekend structure, practice format will be full, one shot qualifying, set session length short, which remember, that'll be five laps if you're doing it by yourself. Uh, press right bumper to go to career settings, driver moves and R&D management on. Rules and flags, corner cutting only, corner cutting stringency regular again. Park Fermi rules on, pit stop experience broadcast. Now this is the uh, most important one, especially if you're doing it by yourself, go to simulation settings. Again, make sure the AI difficulty is down to zero. Surface type simplified, recovery mode none, car damage off, low fuel mode easy, race starts assisted, collisions on, and ghosting on. So then we can select back to go to two, career, two player career settings. And then if you're all ready to go, you can invite your friend. And it's basically going to go through exactly as it was uh, in the single player my team. Um, now, I have no friends, so I can't show you. Ah, I have no friends. Nobody likes me. Um, but as I said, you go through it as you normally would in single player my team. So you advance to the first round weekend. Um, and again, if you've got a friend and you're all good, just go ahead, do everything as normal. Make sure that whoever it is is first and second and uh, complete the first race weekend, and that will get you the two achievements there called Fighting for First and Better Together. And again, if you are doing it by yourself, make sure you've got everything set up, and remember to press the pause button straight away on your dummy account so that um, it takes over an AI. But hopefully you'll get those two achievements. Next up is the last couple of multiplayer ones. So an easy one we can do. Uh, is spectate an online race. So we can go to social play. So scroll over to multiplayer, go to social play, go to browse. Brr, 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 browse. Browser. And then it will get you one. What we need to do then is find uh, one that is highlighted with R. So as you can see there, R obviously stands for race. 
And the session is coming to a close because you want to spectate an online race. You don't get the achievement until the race finishes. So if you're spectating someone in practice, qualifying and a 13, 14 lap race, well, that gets kind of tiresome. So uh, sorry, I did go a bit quick, but if you just keep looking at someone with R, um, it's literally then just a case of pressing the Y button to spectate and um, yeah, you just wait until the race is finished, then the achievement will unlock and you will get the watchful eye achievement for spectating an online race. Will that be Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin? Hello, Luke Lane 21. Congratulations for driver of the day. But will that be Alonso in an Aston Martin celebrating a win this year? Who knows? Right. So. By, by the way, basically, all online modes will contribute to the 10, 50, and 100 finished races achievements as well. Now, what we're going to do, um, we, we're we going to go into a league now. We're going to create league. Sorry, that's in multiplayer, the bottom right-hand corner. So, uh, go to league, create league. I'm going to type in the name Wieners. And apparently that's fine. Uh, choose location, Europe. It doesn't actually matter where the hell you are, to be honest, in all fairness. Uh, league pattern, league colours is fine. Fine. Kind of look like two hairy balls with two wieners, so that's always funny. So I'm just going to choose that one. Right, what we are going to do now is we're going to select the start time and choose the current day, obviously. And depends what time it is, we only need about two or three minutes to set it up. Um, but if you hit the... Um, we're going to adjust the time forward five minutes anyway. Uh, that's what I've done. I, I didn't even need to. It's about 101, uh, so this is plenty of time. But if you want to adjust the time for five minutes to give yourself a bit of breathing room, that's fine. Make sure that you have checked all the days and then press uh, the X button to advance. Um, and now it doesn't matter what tracks you do. Just keep uh, hitting down uh, or just keep going until it, it's able to, to, to uh, let you go through. Next up, we are going to go to League Settings. And then we're going to adjust the maximum competitors to two. Maximum competitors, they're quite close to the bottom, fourth from bottom. Do that to two, click confirm settings and OK to continue. Now we are going to select the next league event. So confirm settings, all good. Next up, we're going to choose next league event, which is open. It's the wiener event. Come down and get your wiener so for now at DFS. And eventually, we're going to be joining. Now, this is going to take us to the lobby. We can press the A button pretty much straight away on Ready Up. Um, now, obviously, depending on the time, like I said, we literally need to just change a few things. So I didn't really need to do this, but I ended up having to wait seven minutes. Hopefully, you only have to wait a couple of minutes less or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's only because I adjusted the time forward by five minutes, just to give myself an extra bit of breathing room. You didn't have to do that, really, because we had a couple of things, to, only a few things to change. But there's no reason to rush. That's what I've seen in a, a couple of people say, oh, you got to rush, got to rush. You can just adjust the time and take your chill pill. So once you have it readied up, we are going to load into the event here with an AI racer. We're going to press A to start, and you can either crash, smash, bash, and crash the gas flash, or we can just uh, press start, retire from session and then press yes but it's always a lot funner to uh, make a smash bash crash and dash isn't it oh by the way yeah to go multiplayer you've actually got to hold the a to clutch and then release the a to go um now what i should have done was crashed into the guy but uh, that's fine but once you've crashed and you've retired you'll load out and the achievement will unlock eventually that is a fantastic race suit. Holy crap. That's dazzling. That dazzled me. Right. So now, after the achievement unlocks, there it is. Racing cliques. So That's how you can easily get a uh, league race done and dusted. Right. Next up, we should only have four multiplayer achievements left now. And this is for completing uh, 10, 50, and 100 online races. And the one that may be a little bit tricky here is um, for finishing first in a ranked and unranked multiplayer race. Now, of course, on true achievements, there are always boosting sessions, so always keep an eye out for those. 
If you've got a friend, of course, to help you with the unranked, that will make it easier as well. Now, unranked is obviously, you can just invite someone in your own personal private little lobby. Two, the two of you guys, or however many of you, will win. Job done, that's it. Um, and that'll be the first one. To finish first in a ranked race will be a little bit trickier. Um, but there is a method that, that can work. Uh, there is a little bit of a method here that can work. This is how terrible I am. I thought I was fantastic during the single player, and I just got my ass handed to me in this one. But for the ranked, there is a method. Um, if you can, try and get into a Monaco race. Now, what you, um, what you will do then is press the start button. Basically, you can press the start button, I believe, to boost the 100 races. Um, and of course, because the AI, when you when you press start, the AI won't obviously crash and stuff. His um, Your rating will then get to A and S. So basically, that's what it's like in F1. If you haven't played F1 multiplayer before, um, it's all based on safety rankings. So the less you crash, the cleaner you race, the higher your rating. So if you get into an A and an S lobby, the chances are you'll you'll be you'll find people and race with people that um, are clean racers, rather than people who are rated sort of D, E, F, whatever, who just crash into you because they complete moronicals. Um, but that is probably is pretty much the best method if you're not amazing at online racing. So if you press the start button, try and boost the hundred races. I believe it does work, and I believe it does count. If the track is not going up doing that, just simply go ahead. Um, oh, well, as you can see, then here we go. I press the start button, and of course, I'm just cracking on going about my daily business. Job done. Um, but yeah, so obviously, if you were to do this in every race, your rating would then get to A and S, and then you will um, eventually be with people who are good at driving and not crash into you like douchebags. Um, so, yeah, um, <laughs> it's a tricky one, though. The so yeah, if you try and go to Monaco, now Monaco is always a, a, a tricky one as well. Sometimes you'll you'll see people who will get disqualified for crashing, blah, blah, blah. So if you try and get to Monaco, just press the start. It's basically going to be the best method. So pressing the start button to boost 100 races, get your a &S lobbies up. A lot of people have actually said that the a &S lobbies were pretty much empty. A lot of them were empty, and they've basically won a few races just on sort of random tracks, just pressing the start button. So if you're not that fantastic at it, just keep pressing the start button, and hopefully the, the higher rating you get the easier it will become, as you will be with more people. Um, I, there is actually someone, and I'm looking on True Achievements now, um, called Kiza Sos, or Kiza Sos, sorry if I got that one, uh, zero, 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 zero. He basically said he was a D-ranking, would always try to vote Monaco. The second, race, the second race using the start button, he won, and he used the start and pause for qualifying and the race. So... That's one thing, if you're trying to get that ranked achievement, that's probably the, the best method you're going to do. Hopefully, the devs here from Codemasters will not patch it, because that won't be very nice. So if you can, and if you're, if you're only just starting out, just press the start button, and then hopefully your luck will just swing in <laughs> in the favour. Um, so, and of course, the other ones then are sort of... I mean, obviously, if you can get into a... Consistent. This is more easier said than done. If you can get into a lobby where you're with the same people and you, you end up chatting to them and everyone's having a good laugh and you say, oh, look, I need to win win the race for the achievement. Do you mind letting me? That's pretty much rarer set, easier said than done purely because the amount of randoms that can join and we'll just crash into you anyway. So um, that's one thing. But if you're looking to try and boost it, there's a couple of tricks to it. You can join a 25% lobby sort of early morning. Wherever the hell early morning is, that's up to you. But obviously, you know, I think early morning here is night time in sort of different parts of America, in the UK. Um, yeah, so it's... If you can try and get out in sort of early hours in the morning, early morning, those couple of little trips, uh, tricks, yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> it's pretty... It's a pretty... Pretty much a random one. Um, but hopefully, like I said, hopefully the pause and start start and pause method will help you big time. That's the only sort of advice that I've got for the ranked achievements, I'm afraid. Because as you can see, uh, cut, cutting corners terribly, and I can't even get past this guy. So that's annoying. 
Um, also, what I should point out as well is that the trackers may not work on the multiplayer stuff as well. So if you, again, like I said, if you find that the trackers are not going up as you're completing races, and if you've already completed a, a, an unranked win or a ranked win, uh, completely quit out the Xbox dashboard and go back in, and hopefully that'll sort it out. But um, yeah, so once you've done that, hopefully then you will have won, won an unranked race, won a ranked race, and then completed 10 50, uh, 10, 50, and 100 races online, and that will be your full 1,000 out of 1,000. Now, to, to do this, it's pretty much, like I say, going to take you around 25 to 30 hours, pretty much just for the um, 100 online achievements. Although, with this one, you can literally just set up your Xbox, watch a film, and just chill out. Um, <laughs> just chill out for a f for five, so that's all pretty good. But there we go then, guys and gals. So that is my condensed-down, smaller package of a F1 2022 guide. Um, I really hope you enjoyed the game. I absolutely loved it. Hope you did as well. And I hope the guide has helped. If it did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as usual. If it hasn't, or you or you felt um, some parts could have been improved, because I'm not, I don't usually do sort of condensed down guides. So if anyone has any um, uh, comments on how I can improve if I do any of these types of guides in the future, Please let me know and I will happily take any constructive criticism on board. Not full criticism because I'll cry, but constructive criticism is fine, just fine. Um, so, so yeah, just let me know then if you felt it could be improved or if you weren't too happy with the guide, then I'll see what I can do better next time. But uh, and a big shout out here, of course, as always, to my Patreon supporters. Um, absolute legends, you guys and gals. Thank you so, so much. And thank you so much for watching as well. So uh, it's been a long one, but I'm going for a break. So I'll see you in the next Game Pass game, guys and gals. Be love.